What's going on everybody, JCR here and welcome back to another video. Today we have an incredible task showcase for you all. You may have heard of button challenges before, where a player is tasked with beating a game using as few button presses as possible. Today that challenge has been applied to Super Paper Mario, seeing how many times we need to press the 2 button in order to beat the game. This challenge hinders our ability to jump, answer prompts, use items, among many other things. Zimbo's been working on this project for over six years and everything has led to this task. So, how many two presses does it take to beat Super Paper Mario? Well, let's find out. Enjoy the video. What is going on everybody? My name is JCR the second, bringing you day three of the birthday weekend of Super Paper Mario. Uh, Today we have a very special task to stream for you all, a project that has been in the work for the past few years by various community members, and the most prominent of them, those being Zimbo, who has worked hard to put together an entire task to showcase what an entire run would look like. So, it's gonna be really cool. Um, I myself, JCR the second, will be streaming this run, uh, however we do have some other people for commentary today. Uh, of course we have Zimbo here, the creator of the task. Yo, what up? Dude, we already hit six. We need, we need reset, dude. That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Derek here, who did a great job in the Any% percent race yesterday. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be hopefully focusing on the blind reaction and trying to explain the Any% percent stuff you'd normally do. <laughs> and we have Phaser, who has been in the community for a while now. Hello, everyone. I'll hopefully explain more of the techniques and the uh, the tassing side of it more than the any percent. But yeah, excited for the run today. Me too. Uh, I'll pop in every now and then, but uh, these three will be showcasing the tass, and I hope you all enjoy. I will now leave it to you guys. All right, thank you, Stay Good. Uh, first, I guess I'll explain that you've seen, I think, two tasses at this point on the channel, but let's just explain real quick again. Tass is a uh, tool-assisted speedrun where uh, we recreate a series of inputs using tools like save state, slow down, memory watch, all that good stuff. And it plays back a quote unquote perfect speed run. Uh, but in this case, it's what's called a low tag, where we're not really going for time, but we're demonstrating something. And today we're demonstrating the two button challenge or the minimum two presses. Basically trying to get from beginning to the end of the game uh, while pressing that two button there. Button labeled two, I know that could be confusing as little as possible and uh, I guess I'll <laughs> to be semantical and the two press you know there's some debate about half press and stuff um, a press is when the button goes from not pressed uh, not pushed to push and as you can see right now uh, we have an input display at the bottom so you could always be looking at that throughout the task uh, when that button is held we could like hold it for as long as we want so we're actually doing that right now Many benefits to holding the two button. Allows uh, Mario to jump higher off of enemies, jump higher in general, uh, no peach uh, floating with the parasol. So we take advantage of the two button, but once we release it to push it again, it's another push to our account. So yeah, uh, one thing I should mention is that we could thankfully mash the dialogue with the one button. So you can see it going crazy right now <laughs> if you're at 60 FPS. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot of that. Uh, and I guess one more thing before we see some actual gameplay. Um, the two button has many uses. Um, I can go through literally everything that's relevant. The main one is jumping. So anytime you have to jump, that's a two press. But there's also several other things that the two button is used for, uh, mainly uh, for menuing. Uh, if you want to switch characters, that's two two presses. One to open up the menu, one to select the character. Same with pixels, that's two presses. And uh, items is also two presses. And anytime a character asks you a prompt, a yes or no prompt, or literally anything, to select either yes or no, you also have to press two at least once. And that includes every time there's a save prompt, so you'll be seeing a lot of those as well. And uh, last major one is anytime you need to select an item to either give to a character or to unlock a door, that's another two press. So there's many places. Um, that we need press two. And there's another one right there. Uh, Merlin just asked if we want to accept the pure heart. So that was a two press. So we're at seven. Um, so I guess before we continue, um, I want to see some guesses for what the total two press count number is. Um, I'll give you guys a good ballpark. 
Back in 2018, when the challenge first started, we were at 625. So don't guess above 625. Yeah. <laughs> 350. 350. Uh, it is above, it's a triple digit number, so somewhere in that ballpark. We're at seven right now, so. <laughs> well, I guess I'll also explain. Um, normally, uh, in these kind of tasks, you can kind of guess what the time is going to be at the end. I'm just going to flat out say that the time is five hours, uh, 48 minutes, and 51 seconds. So quite a long one today. If you're on YouTube, uh, feel free to watch it in chunks, watch it... Uh, you know, skip around, um, but here on Twitch, we're gonna try to power through it all. <laughs> we're in it for the long haul here. Yeah, definitely. There are some uh, breaks, but we'll get there when we get there. This is Let's our compromise I mean. for no hundo race. <laughs> <laughs> and we have some classic uh, no jumping movements. Really, uh, losing, really good. Losing four frames every time, but you know, you gotta take what you can get. <laughs> So Merlin's going to give us our return pipe here. Um, another thing is that using that return pipe is three two presses, so um, not the best tool, but we have it now. You'd think that you would never use the return pipe, but it actually gets a use later. Not going to spoil it, but it's a cool little route. Yeah, surprisingly we do use it once. Uh, I guess another thing, we already talked about the input display, but some stuff on the bottom. The bottom left number is how many two presses are for that segment. As you imagine, the total press is going to be in the uh, triple digits, so it's nice to kind of break it up to see how many we need for each chapter. Uh, obviously, the bottom right is the total number. That's where we want to keep lowest. And some on the right, we have some cool stats that get updated, like the total health, points, attack level, current items. Keep your eye on the items, by the way. That's very important when we get some items. Item and HP routing are both pretty significant. Um, HP in the early game, especially. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm excited to see how the grind goes. <laughs> All right, we're into one dash one. <laughs> yeah, we reset back to zero. And uh, if you guys have any. Uh, Talking to the chat right now, Twitch chat. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the, the uh, chat. Try to answer them. Yeah. All right, getting started. Oh, wait. Oh. Did these think we took damage? Oh no. What's more, are you doing? So as you can imagine, we don't really have much right now, so there's unfortunately not a lot we could do at the start here. Uh, just try to maximize, or I guess minimize our jumps. So that's unfortunately four, but we are going to get a big upgrade here. Uh, from the 3D flipping, and you'll actually see how that's very useful in a few chapters. actually got a coin. Um, I initially believed that we need to have coin so that we could go through these dialogue options, uh, only two instead of three. But I think that even if we had zero coins, it still didn't matter. So unfortunately, a little time lost there. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that, but that makes sense. I mean, I got that coin anyways. I didn't try to get it, so that's what I'll say but... it now I'm live on stream because this still gets misconcepted. The fastest thing <laughs> is to not get a coin and just push yes twice. Because <laughs> this still gets misinformed every day. Even Thanks, got me. Zach. <laughs> so we picked up a shell shock and we picked up a fire burst. You can imagine the fire burst is usual, but do we use the shell shock like in any percent? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Something tells me that's a no. Maybe for some crazy thing later. Perhaps. Or maybe it is just for being a step. We'll see. Uh, 
Uh, small thing there, if you recently have flipped, if you go back, you have a little bit of invincibility, so use that to move the Goomba in a nice spot, and boop, do that. Oh, that's sick. You're going to be seeing a lot of that kind of uh, enemy manipulation. Um, in these early stages, we don't really have much to work off of, like they were going to do anything. <laughs> That Goomba was looking promising, but I couldn't really do much with it. But anytime we see like an enemy, I'm trying to use it. We're taking a little time loss there. Um, we're actually trying to try to get a lot of coins. Um, I want to see if anyone could guess what we need these coins for. Um, here's a hint: it's not for what's the guy, the Meatball, Old Bird. Not for him. We're never. They're never going to talk to him, unfortunately. So sorry, Meatball fans. But we are going to try to get a lot of coins. All right, how are we going to do on the uh, point grind here? Uh, oh, okay. I guess we're not. I guess we're not going to deal with that. <laughs> twelve hundred's decent. It's decent. <laughs> Got twelve hundred points. Like, that's pretty good. Right? That was the fastest grind I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So normally you would want like at least I think like thirty thousand if you're jumping on the squigs, but I guess we don't need to do that. We're gonna get to the top of the staircase, and thankfully. Uh, where is he? Oh, there, there's someone down there. So we can come up again. Alright, good. <laughs> Cross that, got a few more coins. We have very floaty jumps there because we're holding two, so we can easily cross that gap. Yeah, you'll be seeing the two button help pretty much the entire task. There's no real reason not to hold it, so it's just nice to always hold it. A few times throughout the task uh, that we actually, like, the game won't allow you to, like, talk to an NPC if you're holding a two button, so that's, like, the only real time you will let go of the button. Uh, we're trying to conserve our HP here, so we're gonna be flipping in and out of 3D quite a bit. <laughs> quite a lot of it. We're just, we're, uh, we're really, uh, uh, treading on thin ice with the 3D meter. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that is 8 for 1 1 question mark. Um, unfortunately, every time you be a level, it asks you to save. There's nothing you do about that. Even if you don't create save file, they'll still ask you if you want to save, which is so annoying. So, unfortunately, every time you be a level, that's one extra two press. So it's um, like 50? Uh, not or, I think it's like 30? I don't remember exactly. 4 times 8. Oh. Matt. Um, I don't think you don't need to do it for of World of Nothing. That's World of Nothing, nothing. Underwear doesn't need it. 6 slash 2. Few uh, that we don't need it. I was just thinking about. Wait. Never mind. Oh, I there's there a lot more yes and no boxes scrap. in the run. Yeah, those those rack up quite a bit. Uh, here's a cool thing here. I accidentally found this trap. Uh, apparently, you can just bounce off a Koopa like that. <laughs> you don't really need to be above it for some reason. Only for Koopas. Um, weird interaction there. Earlier when we just climbed the um, the vine, I thought Moonrise found a strat that you hit the block and land on it, or is that not used here? Uh, that's an asterisk mark that you should save for later. Okay. There's a surprise coming up in roughly five and a half hours. <laughs> I'm sure I'll remember that. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, I was gonna say, oh yeah. Fortunately, at, at this point, not much we could do. We're already at 24. We had some few clever workarounds, but nothing too crazy, nothing too out of the ordinary. I'm just playing by the book. Um, we are going to be doing a GBS, uh, kind of a weird version of GBS. Do you want to explain real quickly what, what GBS is before we get into it? If anyone knows. I run on English, so I don't really know how it works. <laughs> Basically, we uh, clip out of bounds in the shop, and we navigate around uh, the town to get to a like weird plane out of bounds that allows us to skip. Not only getting thorough, but also talking to the uh, the green guy, the NPC. I'm gonna see it here. But it's gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to from um, either a any percent like human run or even like the task really. 
clip in here to the sign, stuff and uh, yeah. we go around. <laughs> so all the shops and all the like the houses in the town are still loaded in. So we're actually right now we're going around the seams of the house uh, in the dark. Instead of avoiding uh, like jumping over the doors, normally you have to jump over doors and pipes. Instead, we just go around the seams, staying out of the bounds, and jump at the top. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Yep. That was so that's that a, was pretty that's cool. That's the two-button version of GPS. And the huge thing here, all the way up until this point, has been leading to this moment. We get Thoreau. Um, we get Thoreau. And um, that's going to be a huge upgrade for us. The second best pixel in the entire run for this challenge. Uh, now we could pretty much grab any enemy we want and use it in various different ways. Huge pickup for us. So we didn't do the point grind at the beginning. Uh, we're gonna try to get a few more points here because we do need points, but not as much as you might think. Pick up a few more coins, That's and then here's gonna be an introduction to a pretty crucial mechanic, or at least for the early game. We're going all the way over here. And the, the tree was back that way, Mario. I'm gonna pick up this bald cleft. Um, if you play this game casually or even run it, you know we have to jump under this red tree ten times. Um, we don't need to do that. Instead, we're going to use the home menu. <laughs> a very weird quirk in this game. Uh, I'm going to try my best to explain it. It's kind of weird. Normally, when you take damage from an enemy, you're not able to like bounce off of any other enemies until you land. But if you interrupt that damage with the 3D meter, then you're actually able to bounce off an enemy like that. Oh and my god. The way... It, okay, I'll, I'll get back to that because we're going to see it one more time, but let's quickly talk about what's happening here. Um, the red tree works really weird. The, instead of tracking how many jumps you do under the tree, it just kind of tracks when you're airborne under the tree. And as long as you land, you don't even have to jump. It'll increment the, uh, the, the red tree counter and... Yeah, surprisingly it wow. works. <laughs> wow, that's even faster than the old strat, too. That's a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> and we also grab a mushroom there. We're going to need some health. So that was pretty cool. All right, we're going to see one more home button. Uh, we call it home button buffers. We'll do it one more here. And uh, some weird quirk in the game. When you're in the home uh, menu, the timer to tick down the 3D meter doesn't pause. Um, we still have to, like, unpause it to actually have it tick down, but the time it takes to like tick down is done through the home menu so it only like advances two frames so it allows us to tick down the entire 3d meter um in like 15 we leave frames <laughs> yeah 15 in-game frames is one 3d bar cycle with perfect home menu buffering here we're going to be doing uh kind of the casual route oh pulling this enemy for another coin <laughs> Yeah, normally you can just toss that squig on the spring. Uh, he'll shoot a rock and you can jump, but that would waste a two press. A few more points there. We're gonna get close to the next level up, but not quite. We're at 6,000 now. Trying to save our level up, because we're gonna need it later. But we need it for a very specific reason, so... Important that we don't get too many points. Alright, now we're on to the O-Chunks fight. This fight's really cool for a pretty weird reason. Uh, I don't think... I think one person has, like, shown off this fight um, in 3D. Um, we're doing another home button, uh, home button buffer, home menu buffer. Um, surprisingly, this one works, even though O-Chunks is pretty big. I promise we won't be doing it this many times. Um, it's just very useful for 1-3. Uh, so if you're kind of getting nauseous from the home menu, <laughs> don't worry, it doesn't happen that much more. But um, yeah, this fight is pretty cool scene done in 3D, because now we have to worry about our uh, his X and Z position <laughs> to bounce off this guy. And time taking 3D damage at the right time. Yep. Fortunately, uh, didn't have the luxury of a high level there, so that fight took too long, so we had to take damage in the air.
This uh, this chapter is actually going quite well. We're at zero still. So. Uh, I hope I didn't just jinx it just then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're actually going to be doing Ice Triple Skip, but not in the way you might expect. <laughs> it doesn't really save time, but we are going to technically do it. We just have to set up... Okay, that guy's going over there. Now we're going to grab it. Uh, doing it normally takes too much health. It takes three hit points, and as you can see, we're already at four. Probably not the best idea. Uh, we're actually going to use the Goomba to bounce off that spring. And then now, as you can see, the Ice Turbo is actually where we want it to be. Uh, but we don't have to take three extra health for it. Kind of luring it along here. Fortunately, we didn't have to do it so far away. I didn't know you could just walk across those yellow platforms. Yeah, that's another good thing about the two button being held, is that you have slightly uh, decreased gravity. So it allows you to like make those kind of uh, maneuvers. It also you can lets do it you on hover. all of them except for the last one. That's why we have the ice turbo yeah. here. It also lets you hover over clouds in seven three and seven four in some places without having to jump over the tiny gaps. And we're in the final room of one three. No two presses. It was pretty dang good. And uh, one, <laughs> two, and three. All right, I'm so out. I quit. <laughs> um, of course, no enemies in there, nothing really to do. Um, you could still do like the normal blue pedal stole method by using like the one and minus button. Uh, it's the same amount of two presses, that was just slightly faster. Right, honestly, 1 4 is probably my favorite, one of my favorite chapters of the entire run. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, it's also quite long. So, first of all, um, this room is quite fun. I won't spoil exactly why it's fun just yet. Doing some stuff with these buzzy beavers. Okay, one more. Okay, I, I said we're not going to have many more. One more. Forgot, I actually forgot about this one. <laughs> So if you remember, uh, we were at 4 HP, then we dropped down to 3, so now we're at 1. Uh-oh. Just give it a second. Okay, that guy dropped. Turn up really good. And grab that mushroom. And uh, no. here's the first break of the run. Uh, if you see at the bottom there, it says, Waiting for a Megabyte will return in 24 minute, uh, at 24 minutes and 57 seconds. So, if you guys don't know, there's an enemy in this game called a Megabyte. Uh, only appears in certain rooms and chapters, and they take three minutes to spawn. Uh, so we're waiting for one of them in this room. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything in the meantime. So, I'm just gonna, just gonna wait here. Um, I guess I'll explain. Megabytes are very useful. They're a flying enemy that both simultaneously exist in 2D and 3D, so they're very versatile. So any chance we do get to spawn one, we'll take it if it saves some stuff. Unfortunately, it does take quite a bit, so whenever you see the yellow text at the bottom, uh, that's your sign to take a break. Go use the bathroom, go grab a snack. Um, so yeah, I'll try to have some interesting commentary during these, uh, these downtimes, but even for me, they're quite long. <laughs> Maybe we could go through what you use the uh, life stream for, which is what we're actually going for. Oh yeah, so I guess we'll explain uh, the reason. We, we just kind of go right and go to the next room, but we do need a life stream. Oh. Life streams are actually very difficult to come by at this point of the game. We can get quite a few later on, but right now, the only life stream we can get, I'm pretty sure, um, for free without spending, because if we need to get one from the shop, that's like five or six two presses, I forget exactly what. But this one in 4 dash, uh, 1 dash 4 is free, basically, as long as we get there uh, without using the two button. So we are gonna use that live stream somewhere. And I guess it's worth waiting three minutes for it. <laughs> so chat, how's it going? <laughs> Megabyte's just time? going through uh, customs right now. His uh, flight should be here in a moment. Uh, Radio asks, can there be multiple megabytes in the same room? I don't think so. 
That would be wild, though. If imagine like every few minutes there's one spawning in. Um, the thing is that they do fly away on their own after a certain amount of time. So if you don't kill it in time, it just goes away. It would be crazy, though, if there was a way to like manipulate one to never leave and then another one spawns in. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Uh, a megabyte enemy is spawned in the room at the start when you enter the room. It just does. It has its flag set to zero and then eight idle timer. That's crazy. All right, and there it is. <laughs> now we have to wait for it to come down. All right. That was clean. Oh. Got some more coins there. Nice. And here's the live stream. So yeah, just keep your eyes on the uh, the bottom right for the current items. Um, just keep in mind that we have them. It will be useful later. And now we can finally move on from this room. <laughs> so we're actually going to be seeing the Megamite a few more times throughout the run, so just be prepared for that. You can hit those uh, dimensional blocks with an enemy, which is very cool. So that's a, that's a stylish move right there. Um, you get those by shaking the Wii remote. Normally they're just good for getting points, but in our case it allows us to stall in the air. Um, we'll be seeing it a few more times throughout the run. Uh, there's especially a good version of it, a quite literally good version, um, where if you like, I forget the exact movement, but there's a way to make Mario stay in the air like three times as long, so that's also going to be helpful. This is the first instance of using a key, so anytime we need to use a key, that's a two press, unfortunately. Purely? Maybe. Um, <laughs> no key early. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to use the scrubby out, but um... Be early, it's going to be interesting. too many two presses in the, the sand, yeah. I just can't do it. We are going to be doing this, though. Um, motor Mario. <laughs> How many two presses did it take to do key early? I'm curious. Okay. <laughs> Just bounce off of that midair, that's pretty cool. How many would it take to do key early? Um, probably one to clip in, and then maybe three more to get up to the key. Never tried it though, but as you see, we, uh, we don't really need to worry about it. Part in the chat just said, um, gold bar clips. The tough part about gold bar clips is that we're gonna need to switch pixels to slim, which is usually kind of a bad thing to do in this task. Um, it not only costs two presses there, but it takes us off a more useful pixel. Um, it's pretty costly to do them, but I think there are a few. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, one unfortunate part about 1-4 is that there's so many keys, so many locks. How much we could do about that jump? Alright, now we're gonna get this key. Um, Thankfully, there are these uh, two buzzy beetles in this room, so we're going to uh, grab both of them. So there's a so it's good here, and bam, bam. That looks so cool. That's awesome. And wait, there's our level up. So we need awesome. it right then and there. Uh, I think, what was our HP at before? Whatever it was, it wasn't 15, so. That was some parkour stuff. Yeah, whenever there's not an enemy in the room, fortunately, just not much we could do at this stage of the game. I have to take a jump. There's actually a really cool idea for this room in particular to save a jump, but I wasn't able to figure it out. If we were able to clip out of bounds in this room without spending a two press, we could actually hit the switch, um, then go out of bounds, like go through the pit out of bounds, and then respawn at the button. But from what I tried to test, there's no way to go out of bounds without at least spending one jump. So 
It would have been cool to show off, but it would have taken longer. And took a health point, which we desperately need. Alright, time for the uh, big reveal that I've kept hidden for a long time. We're actually using the Shell Shock here. And uh, if you were actually in the Discord when uh, I think Zachlink brought up this idea, I actually said that it didn't work. Uh, I secretly did make it work, and we'll soon see why. <laughs> oh, even using it to solve the puzzle? That's yeah, so we're using amazing. it to solve the puzzle, but we actually could have just solved that in two jumps anyways. So we're actually going to be using the Shell Shock in a very, very weird way. Yeah, we have this giant staircase here, which is uh, not looking good for us, but we do have a Shell Shock. Um, so here, we're going into a uh, float precise position, exactly 150, okay, we got it. And it allows us to do uh, this with the Shell Shock. And there it goes. Oh wait, it's coming back down, okay. So, uh, <laughs> you imagine, this is why we need the health. <laughs> Every time he's climbing up the set, that's 2 HP. So this is the big uh, thing that made it work, the strat, because otherwise we can just keep taking damage because it wouldn't be able to climb the staircase. And uh, one more time, and all right, that's one jump saved, and we'll do three more here to climb the rest of this. You might be wondering why we couldn't just continue that, you know, maybe grind for a million levels, get a million HP, climb the entire staircase. Um, one reason is that we do need to be a low level at this point, or a section later on. But the main reason is that the Shell Shock actually despawns if you go too far right when it's bouncing off the left wall. In fact, we actually used as many bounces as we could. If we actually find one more step, the Shell Shock would have despawned on the left side of the wall. So it just barely worked that we were able to save a jump there. Before we get into the Fractal fight, one other thing I wanted to note. We actually jump around the corner of the stairs because it would stop us horizontally, not vertically. It actually lets us get an extra um, skip in there. Right, yeah. So um, when you're at like running speed, uh, there's like some sort of weird coyote time deal that allows you to like run in air slightly further than where you could normally. That's actually what makes um, blue, pedible, uh, blue pedestal skip, skip possible. That was a mouthful. Um, just having running speed and going on your little ledge. Uh, so we use that there to allow us to jump all the way up, use our max height jump to skip five steps instead of four. Um, so this fight is very interesting, Fractale. Uh, I think it's like really the only boss fight in the game that is more like platforming than anything else. Um, more like a cutscene. Yeah, at this point, it's a, it's a cutscene. Um, no matter what your attack is, um, it takes nine hits to defeat Fractale. Um, three hits in uh, three kind of phases, three cycles. So, it doesn't really matter where your attack is right now, so it's okay to be in level two. Um, this fight has gone through a lot of, I guess, revisions, different methods to do this fight. Um, fun fact, the current, like, method of any percent, like, the, uh, grabbing the Frackle and then flipping in and out 3D to have the Frackle push you, uh, that was first originated in this challenge, in, uh, in an earlier version of the fight, which is pretty cool to see. You know, most of the time, what happens is that a new speedrun trick is found and it gets applied to the two button challenge. Uh, very few times does the other way around happen, where something cool is found in the two button challenge and it's used in any percent. Um, I've never seen getting onto Fractale that far back. That's fun. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we can't really jump onto Fractale, and we can't really afford to lose more health at this point. Um, so we have to wait until he actually goes under the ground so we can get on. And now it's time for um, this, whatever this is. So, for a long time, it took at least one jump to defeat Fractale. Um, but using this method, we can uh, damage fractal, uh, fractal without jumping. Um, so the way it works, it's really specific. Fractal actually does oscillate up and down. Uh, it may look like a, like a visual thing, but he actually does oscillate up and down. And for whatever reason, it makes Fractals fall off of Fractal at a very specific point. If you throw at the right time, it'll fall off of Fractal. And if we do run onto the Fractal right before it falls off, you're able to bounce off of it. And it makes this fight pretty long, but uh, it does do it without jumping. 
Okay. So that's three hits. Um, thankfully, there's a way to uh, not fall off, so at least if you don't have to watch the cutscene two more times. Does going into 3D there also causes that? Um, I don't really know the exact specifics, I just know that works. Um, I think the way, it, so like, the fractal pauses when you're flipping in and out 3D, so I think it just allows it to like stay in the air and allows us to, uh, I guess like, the fractal won't leave Fractail until the perfect time so it could actually fall off. It's really weird, I just did a bunch of experimenting, because I accidentally, I think I accidentally had it happen and tried to replicate it, and this is how I figured it out. <laughs> Probably a fast way to do it, but this one it is. And we do need to, like, have the fractals spawn at the right position so we're able to bounce off of them, grab one, because we can't just reach it there in time um, with just one fractal bounce. We do need two, though. Um, something else I was going to mention about this fight. Um, you might think, I actually have the idea of using another home buffer bounce, but you can't carry something when you're doing a home buffer bounce because you obviously drop whatever you're holding when you take damage. So that would have been cool to show off, but fortunately you'll be able to bounce off the fractal, but you won't be able to damage it back to it. We used to use a different strap there um, during the phase transitions, during the different fractal or the different fractal phases, where we would flip with an, item, an enemy held above us. But that strat takes damage, and it's also not the strat, so you don't use it anymore. But um, it allowed Mario to get on top of the fractal antenna, and then we did the damage directly. Yeah, this, like I just mentioned, this fight has gone through a lot of revisions. You used to take nine jumps, that quickly went down to three for a long time. And uh, then it went down to one, and then we found this strat, so now it's jumpless. It's pretty crazy. For, um, I actually want to pull up something real quick. I forgot the exact number, but this chapter, uh, as you can see, it's at, um, well, it's going to be at 13 two presses with the save pump. But in total, it's 13. Uh, the initial run through, I want to say, let me see if I could pull up the exact number because I forget it off the top of my head. But this is one of the most improved um, chapters. All the way, let me see if I scroll and find the actual date um, while we're waiting for this cutscene to happen. So many provisions on Google Sheets, my god. <laughs> I don't know if this was mentioned, but um, it took six years to complete this, right? Yeah, so I so this, the actual task that we're watching right now has been in production since uh, 20, uh, August 2023, but I've been doing uh, segmented tasks for chapter by chapter since 2018. Um, the first initial run through finished in 2021, chapter by chapter. Uh, but at that point, everything was outdated. So <laughs> it eventually came to the point where it was like, instead of updating it chapter by chapter, let's just uh, make the entire thing. And I think it turned out great. Uh, anyways, uh, in July 23 of 2018, 1 4 took 32 presses. So, um,. Saved about 17 there <laughs> over the course of six years, which is really cool. The two button challenge beyond category extensions. Sure. <laughs> yeah, if, if anyone's crazy enough to do this RTA, uh, don't. <laughs> what would be the time penalty if you do push two? I don't think there would be. I think it would just be like how low percent is or something where. You could take it like 10 hours longer, but as long as you have a lower two button press, it beats out everyone else. Then the question is, how would you track it all? And, well, who wants to really moderate that? Or if speedrun.com would allow you to do that. Uh, I'll get him says, oh, is there any segments with zero two presses? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but do remember that anytime it asks us to save, which is like at the end of every level, it is one two press, so just keep that in mind. Where do I get the flip side square graphic? Um, it's all on a uh, spider's resource. There's actually a lot of cool stuff there. Could run a full. 
Could run prediction. But the question is who's gonna be here in six hours? <laughs> to see it go through. Hold on, let me see. I'll be a reasonable number. Yeah, in case you were not here, um, this task is uh, five hours. Oh, I think I misspoke earlier. It's five hours, I think, 43 minutes and 51 seconds. Not uh, 48. I think so, I think I said 48 earlier. 43. So we just saved ourselves five minutes from that misspeak. Let's go. Still very long. <laughs> this, uh, this task is slower than my first ever run of two runs. <laughs> So, if there's anything you want to take from today, at least you could say you probably could beat a task in time. Uh, this one. <laughs> oh, and if you notice, we uh, let go of the two button there because it, would, it saves a little bit of time because otherwise we have to float with the Peach Parasol. But we had almost 50 in one chapter, so I think this is a reasonable number to guess. Over or under? I think that's fair. I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously. Remember, this did start back in 2018, started at 625. So that's your. If you want to make an educated guess. There you go. Can you press two for me just as a little treat? Uh, we could do it in like a few minutes. I think that's fair. I take elevator instead of drop off right side of the tower. I think it's faster. I might be wrong though. It is faster. Yeah, I know at a certain point it's better to drop off the right side when you get later. Um, maybe only for the two button. Only when you're leaving the chapter one door. Chapter two, it's faster to like after the black like, cutscene. If chapter two, it's faster to drop off. Or gold bar clip, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of those in this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, we're not going to be doing a Merlin cutscene skip. I know um, that's a highly anticipated thing. Not going to be doing it here. <laughs> so, anyway, so we use the Shell Shock in 1 4. Obviously, we're going to use the Fire Burst here. Um, just typical any percent stuff. Um, but you did notice that takes two two presses, so um, probably not going to come back here ever again. So enjoy this. Uh, what's, it, what's the what's the fix name? I completely forgot. I know it was Dillis. Saffron. Dillis is the one in a uh, flop side, right? Yes. Gotcha. So uh, enjoy that while you can, and now it's over. This is where I announce that I am doing a uh, two BC hundred percent. No, I'm kidding. Oh my god, dude! Someone mentioned like, is that what's next for? The two button challenge. Uh, no. It took me um, over three years just to finish routing any percent. There's no way I'm doing 100%. <laughs> I also, <laughs> also mentioned someone asked about pip percent. Just remember that every time we need to select a key, that's a two press, so you might be able to guess what the number is there, or at least the right range. <laughs> Probably oh. just over 200 a press area uh, two presses. Yeah. Buying cards would be pretty <laughs> pretty horrible too. <laughs> yeah, for 100. <laughs> yeah, this takes uh, just about six hours. Who knows what 100 percent would be? And we're at 50, so um, I pray for us, I guess. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's the unfortunate thing about having a button labeled two. Um, when you say the two button. Kind of, kind of ambiguous what you mean, but it's the button labeled two on the Wii Remote that we're trying to minimize here. Anyone want to guess the one hundredth two press? That is actually a great idea. I don't even know if I know the hundredth two press. Um, 
I, mm. I think I know where it is, actually. I guess, like, saving after 3-1, something like that. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Alright, so we just got Peach. That's great. Good for us. And, uh, actually that's terrible for us, because now, anytime we want to switch between the two, that's, uh, two, two presses. That's a lot of twos. Uh, so we'll do it, uh, right here, because we need to be Mario. 6-3. 6-3, yeah, we'll beat the entire game, and then we'll do the, uh, the Samurai Kingdom, just for fun. I'm gonna guess the save... Prompt in three, four. All right, okay. Your hundred. I'm not gonna guess because I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't think I remember the answer, but I have a good guess. I don't want to spoil it. The real question is, what's going to be the uh, 69th two press? That's the actual question. All right. Uh, more home button. I promise we won't be seeing more. I promise we're almost through it all. Uh, that might be a lie. <laughs> it's just so useful. Anytime there's an enemy, we just get a free jump without using the two button. Just cost a 10. Alright, a lot of people are thinking under. That's cool. We'll just have to wait and see what the total number is. In approximately five hours. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep writing this down how long this is. By the way, guys, in case you didn't know, there's approximately five hours left. So plenty of time to, uh, <laughs> to, to watch this, I guess. <laughs> okay, one, one more for now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, we probably shouldn't do it anymore because we're at uh, three health. So um, probably not the best idea if we want to survive. Yeah, plenty more time to spam the home button. Um, I guess while we're on the topic, um, I think it was Agurumi who found a really cool use for home button buffers for the uh, the coin block. If you guys haven't watched their um, any uh, April Fool's uh, red and green bridge task, it's really cool. But they uh, they grab like seventy coins from a single coin block using home button buffers. Really cool. Just um, to put it in perspective, normally you can only get 12 max. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, um, normally any percent, you just return pipe out of here. We're gonna have to take the long way back. That was that cool. Agurmi... Yeah, that was sick. So, um... That Agurmi Taz is only... It's sub-20 minutes. It's a little shorter than this. So, what you saw there, I guess we should have explained that, but, um... That squig fell down into the pit, but because that pit's not like a real pit, um, it actually just stays down there, so we're actually able to bounce off of it. Any other pit, they would just die, but because that one's like a screen transition, it doesn't actually hurt Mario. It's standing uh, on the collision that triggers the cutscene to transfer yeah. Mario. <laughs> Those same collision like platforms exist off side of the tower, too. I don't know, there's some weird stuff that could happen there, but you could use like certain pixels or tippy when you're playing there. You can crash your game if you use Dottie at the right time. <laughs> That's you, great. You can jump or like slide while you're transitioning. Very funny stuff. Alright, now we're into another one of my favorite chapters, 2-1. Um, this one, thankfully, uh, we don't have to wait three minutes. That one dash four. Alright, great. So, already doing some weird stuff here for Koopa. Use the uh, parasol bounce to get up here. And, uh, conveniently, there are two more Koopas up here. I'm gonna position them just right. Okay. And get across that gap right there. This is cool, watch this. 
<laughs> a completely <laughs> accidental shell. Um, so fun fact there is that that was actually not really intentional. I actually bently messed up and I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to redo this. Uh, and then I found that, so I didn't have to redo anything. And it looks cool, so that's cool. Gonna be grinding for a few more points here. Um, we need to be careful not to level up for a specific reason in a few minutes from now. But we do need to be close to a level up. So it all makes sense. It's just bear with us. Use the pause. So if you ever see the pause menu, just know that I was just too lazy to do actual RNG manipulation. So I just <laughs> used the pause menu to uh, do some RNG manipulation. But they just to get a few more coins. All right. Uh, shout out for uh, another, I guess, shout out to Gurmi for this room. They found a really cool setup. If you know about any percent, you know about this cool uh, clip that we could do to skip the going into the background and hit the uh, blue switch. But you've probably never seen it done like this before. Normally, I think you, I think runners, or I guess top runners, I don't know who does it, but normally if you want to skip doing it, you go onto the left side of the wall and do a bounce. Because if you're able to jump while in a ceiling, you could pause and do an item, or I guess a, a slide. Uh, not really beneficial to do it on the left side, but we will be doing it. I've never seen anyone go for this in an actual game. I think exactly just like background. practicing it, but I don't know if they ever did any runs. Dude, so close to dying. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. One HP. Okay. Get the Goombas lined up. And uh, now we're out of bounds. Let's so grab a Goomba. Perfect. That camera looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, didn't need to do a jump into the ceiling there because we just used the Goomba to bounce into it. So, nice little optimization there. Shout out again to the for finding that little setup. Alright, so spend one jump here. So there's something off in the distance there. Can't quite make it out. Oh, wait, there are... Uh, there's a uh, pair of Goombas? <gasps> it's Gary's cousin! Oh, uh, he went away, I guess. Wait. Alright, oh, he's back! Okay, great. <laughs> I hear, you might be starting to understand why this is uh, as long as it is. Yeah, I think so. Don't worry, it gets uh, it gets worse later on. A few more points here. A few more coins. If you notice, our, uh, we're actually really close to a level up here. Uh, just uh, under 600 points away, almost 500. Main reason is for this room. We have to be a level 2 at this room specifically. We're going to be bouncing off these cheap cheeps. Uh, they have 2 HP, so if we leveled up one more time, our attack would be 2, so we would only be able to bounce off of them once. Where at this point, we need to jump off them twice. So one jump there. Don't kill it, because we're low level. This is those uh, good stylishes I was talking about earlier. And now that we don't need to, we level up right then and there. Uh, but it's a little bit inconvenient, because now we're such a low level, we actually need to be at a high level, or at least a higher level. Hopefully there are these squigs here. So we're just going to do a, a kind of a makeshift <laughs> XP grind here. And it's a good time to do it, because we do need to wait for... I forgot the, what the enemy is called, the big uh, dino guy. We need to wait for him to uh, move. Gubbus. We need to wait for him to move all the way over to the right side of the screen. So it's a perfect time to get some extra points. Reminder, we had to do this here, because if we did it any earlier, we would not be able to cross the uh, cheap cheats. His name is Joshua. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, 
And okay, so we almost got to another level up. Once again, we need to save our level up because all of our HP gets restored. And uh, uh, did the task desync again? What's going on here? Uh, if only JCR was here, we would feel a lot more home at this kind of boomer skip. So this is a, a life stream jump. This is why we actually got the life stream. Uh, now this takes me back. <laughs> back in the old, good old days where runners would reset way too often. Already more than currently. But um, I probably should have routed this a little bit better, but unfortunately I'm going to have to wait for the 3D meter. Um, so when you take damage and lose your final hit point and have a life stream, you'll kind of pause in midair. And you'll have one frame to either flip or jump uh, out of like this state here. So we're going to use it to double jump up to this blue switch. Um, the shell shock method uh, takes three two presses, this one takes two. Um, but the, the way it works out is that we use the shell shock 1 4, the life stream here. It just works out that way. Shout out to I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. And uh, more waiting. I know what we're waiting for. Uh, it's not for a megabyte, so don't worry. Oh, it's uh, Joshua again. Oh, waiting yeah. for him to turn around. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, can't run across these or a two block gap, so we're just gonna use them all the way across. Pretty close to 69. So just keep that, keep a watch out for that. Thanks. All right. Promise. This is probably one of the last times for a while that we do this. <laughs> There is actually a really, really cool method using a megabyte to do this room without jumping, but it's obviously a lot slower. So we'll just be using a home button buffer bounce here. Um, we used to wait for a megabyte to spawn, uh, then go down to like the uh, the hidden area below this room to lower the megabyte down, then go back up using a damage boost, and then we'll bounce off the megabyte under the star block as it's going through the ground, which is a really cool strat. Fortunately. Not gonna be seeing it here today. Um, speaking of Megabyte, um, one spawns here, so we're gonna be <laughs> waiting again. <laughs> oh yes, I love this part. Uh, what's the fun fact for this time? What's our what's our discussion topic gonna be? Uh, I guess I'll talk about just Megabytes in general, because. Um, Unfortunately, they're not very well documented anywhere. Um, you could look, I think, like on the Mario Wiki, it tells you what chapters they appear in, but they don't really tell you what room. And sometimes there's like misinformation there. Like I remember, uh, I remember reading when I was writing this, there was like a megabyte in a, I forgot what level. I think it was like four dash four or something, something weird like that. There's no megabytes there that I'm aware of. So fortunately, I had to kind of do some testing to see where they spawn, waiting in rooms for three minutes, waiting for nothing to happen. And we'll see later that I actually did miss one. <laughs> that's that's uh that's many hours from now. So yeah, take uh, grab some snacks, go to the bathroom, I'll be here for another that. two minutes. I wonder if you could get like how many two presses would it take to grab that chest up there? And let's say we need the, the stopwatch on top of the mansion. We desperately need to do that. I feel like Megabyte could help you get up there, honestly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could definitely hit the ladder to block right to the right and then climb up the ladder. Yeah. And then Megabyte will come back up. You can jump off of him and you can barely land on the roof. I wonder what we would even use the stopwatch for. Through the stopwatch, I want the card. What's the card here? Persia. Persia. Very useful, I know. <laughs> are we are we giving a nickname to the Megabyte Maggie? I'm I'm down, Maggie the Megabyte. We'll be Ian. it's gonna be green character. Don't worry, so we'll see them. <laughs> Ian the Megabyte. Ian? Yeah. 
Maybe each megabyte's different. Maybe we'll come up with a name for each one. So this one could be Maggie. <laughs> Yeah, we use the fire burst in 1-1 uh, to make the spicy soup. Currently itemless right now, which is kind of interesting. We won't uh, be as a reminder, run. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Sorry, I talked over you. We won't be itemless for the whole run. We're going to be almost item full. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but do remember that most items um, take two, count them, two, two presses to use. So they'll have to save at least three to be useful. But don't worry. We're not going to be uh, itemless for too much longer. I guess one other thing to note, um, we did Boomer skip, and now Boomer is our active pixel. Probably going to want to switch back to throw, I think. Oh, yeah. We're, so, yeah, anytime... I guess we'll talk about this. Um, oh, well, I'll briefly mention it. Yeah, so anytime we quote-unquote skip a pixel, um, out of the currently skippable pixels, uh, they just reward it to us at the end of the chapter. So... Even though we skipped getting Boomer, it'll just give it to us. Same thing happened with Throw. And, uh, okay. So now we're actually able to enter the mansion. Thank you, Megabyte. Didn't even bounce off a bit this time. The sound of the Megabyte spawning always scared. Yeah. It's, I think it scared me on my first playthrough when I was, like, six. When did this game come out? <laughs> 2007. 2007, so I was probably seven or eight. There's definitely something that's scared me coming up from now, but I don't want to spoil anything for the, those who haven't played this game before. Yeah. Fortunately, I think it's one of like the least interesting chapters. We just kind of just play it as normal. Oh no. Yeah, Mario's at 1 HP. The spike ceiling is falling on our head. It looks really dire at this point. I think we're might need a. Yeah, we might be done here. <laughs> oh, Mario, wait! Come on, the door is that way. Oh, that was a, that was a close one. So yeah, another thing is that remember uh, the live stream only heals up to five HP uh, in this game. So we are at 1 HP right now, just, just keep that in mind. And like I said, nothing really to do here, there's no enemies or anything, so just kind of have to play it casually. There are some ideas to get through that room with like a one less jump, but fortunately just the way it's played out, I know what to do. Oh, we, we skipped a uh, 69. I was I just told myself to pay attention to it. What was it? It was like there's the jump one up to one of the jumps up to the chest. Yeah, not that interesting. <laughs> we're we still still not at 100 yet. I think it was getting on the elevator. Yeah, that seems about right. It was the jump up to the question mark block. Okay, so the one after that. Alright, on to, on to 2-3, and uh, before anyone says anything, but I get this a lot. You might be wondering, uh, do we grind for 1 million uh, rubies? And unfortunately, the answer is no. As much as I would have loved to make this task even longer, um, the way it just works is that I think you're capped at 18,000 rupees per uh, VIP room cycle. And every time you need to like get off and on, that's a 2-press, so it racks up really quickly, not faster than just doing the... The intended route. Very sad. And putting the code is through eight two presses, so eh. yeah. <laughs> Another Astro Smart Spear just waiting to the end. Um, let's keep that in mind. I jump up to the uh, the block. Uh, we don't have a live stream here. Uh, not slim. But, um, this is one of the other things that was technically found for the two button challenge. Uh, I think we call it Z jumps. I accidentally found this uh, during one of my tasks, and I think Zach Link applied it to this room in particular. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're able to just jump through the lasers, and uh, 
is both there. Almost died again. And now time for the funny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I don't, know I don't you could put like those lasers. Damageless. It's very hard to do. It's like a one frame. Like to get onto the thing without getting hit is like a one frame trick. Yeah. Um. And now we're uh, we're actually gonna get slim. Surprisingly, we went all through that effort to uh, skip slim, and we're getting slim. Um, slim skip actually takes takes one extra two press, but we have to do it in this order because otherwise we'd have to jump up to slim, then back down, and then all the way back up to the safe. Where in this method we just go all the way up to the safe, and then as we're going down, we get slim, so it doesn't cost us anything. This is one of the few pixels that we can skip, but we're not going to in this room. Uh, I guess I'll mention one more thing. Um, there was an idea about double inputs. Uh, I think runners sometimes accidentally like push an input twice due to like some weird uh, you, like hold a button down, you tap another button, it inputs twice. Yep. Fortunately, you do that with the two button. And I, I have a theory on why. So in the code, uh, there's like significant, so like all the buttons are assigned to a certain uh, bit, like a byte. And uh, I forget the term, I think the two buttons is the most significant bit, or it's the least significant, whatever. The reason why is that because it's the most significant, it can't be used to, um, to do a double input. So it's the only button that can't be double input, which would have been crazy for this task, unfortunately. It doesn't work out that way. We're actually coming up to 100 pretty quickly. Fortunately, the uh, the password could take up eight, so... I think that was the most in the level so far, maybe. Yeah, 20. Stupid chapter two. <laughs> the chapters uh, are pretty balanced, actually. They take around the same amount of two presses for each one. Yeah. And typically, I think on average, each chapter is around 10 to 20. Some take four more, some take far fewer. It, it, it averages around 10 to 20. One jump up there. Okay, I was way off on my 100 guess. Oh well. Oh yeah! And, uh... It's when <laughs> the 100th two press is making Mimi angry. Yep, there we go. We're at the big 100. Um, pretty early onto the run, but thankfully we do get some more stuff later. Actually coming up very soon that will hopefully make the, uh, the two press count not skyrocket as much as it has. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is what scared me as a kid. I'm sure a lot of people will agree and creepy. But uh, for this challenge, it's actually very useful that she she did this, surprisingly. Nice hitbox from that bad there. So this is where Mimi becomes useful. I'm uh, just gonna wait for her to, to appear here. Can't damage her or anything, but can bounce off of her, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure this task guy is gonna Harrison. soon. We're at 1 HP. I think really level up is coming soon, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to hold on much longer. I believe they've, they've survived through it multiple times now. Yeah, That'd somehow we, all, we go down to one, but somehow we make it through. There's a level up, and uh, we're back to 20. That's good. I sure hope uh, we don't lose a whole bunch of health at one room coming up. <laughs> uh, foreshadowing. <laughs> um, there was another route idea of switching to uh, throw and doing more home button buffer bounces. 
But uh, it just didn't work out. This is still the best route, using Slim and just jumping. Uh, so there's an atomic boo here on the staircase. Yep, this is why we need to level up that, that specific room <laughs> to refill our HP. Uh, thankfully, I actually have more than enough to climb up the staircase. No jumps here. Uh, it did cost us 14 health, but hey, what, what can you do? At least the atomic boo gets to be useful for once. <laughs> yeah. So annoying part about this game is that every now and then it just throws you into this weird cutscene deal. And it just makes you press the two button like a million times. This is one of them. Uh, the uh, quiz show. So anytime, uh, every time he asks you or you ask a question, that's a two press. And selecting the uh, Merly is two. So just seven unavoidable two presses here. Yeah, this is a this is a spliced run. Um, hate to admit it here, actually, like quite a few splices. I think uh, twenty six thousand splices. <laughs> That's how many uh, re-records it. This was twenty six k. Gonna report this to JC. No, please. <laughs> I don't want this to get off air. Let's just let's just keep it cool. Only twenty six thousand. I mean, it is a low tech. Yeah, John's totally not trying to reference the number of 130,000 in the middle of 4-2. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately racking up here by a few two presses. Uh, if only we were able to get the, uh, the, like, activating the fight early by going out of bounds. If only that was the reality. Let's skip all of this. This fight's actually very interesting if you know kind of like what's coming up later. Um, if you recall, maybe from your casual playthrough of seeing runs, um, there is a uh, pipe in the next sort of segment in the, the pre-chapter three, where it's covered by two red brick blocks. So we need Boomer, and we can do this fight without jumping if we switch to Boomer. But we have something in the works here. We're actually going to jump on these toilet stalls. Take a jump and not switch the Boomer. Uh, and it's not fairly clear right now, but it'll all make sense soon, just, just wait. <laughs> that is so fucking cool. So we, can't just, that. Yeah. so we can't unfortunately bounce off of Mimi continuously because these uh, Merly interrupts us, so we just land on the floor, but we can land on the uh, bullet stall to keep us high enough to bounce off of it. So it's only one jump there. I was thinking about that meme arise. Meme where I said found the Mimi sequence break only to premiere in the challenge run task. I was thinking like it would be really funny to like if I found the uh, the holy grail of a uh, like <laughs> the cutscene after one dash four. Just like yeah, just premiere in this random two button challenge task. Fortunately, uh, no real sequence breaks here. I wanted to try to do the thing, John, where like, I think it happened like once, I forgot to do, but where Mario kind of clipped out of bounds in this fight. I don't know if that's known or why it caused that. I don't know if you know Sacred. What was the question? If you like, I remember seeing one clip after the fight where I think Mario like went out of bounds after the fight. Oh yeah, you have to be left of Mimi against the wall. Yeah, I tried to replicate that, but it, it didn't. <laughs> Probably for the best, because you're at 6 HP, I don't know if it takes HP for doing that. Eh, it takes 1 HP, because you fall out of bounds. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, so that's chapter 2. Uh, we're at 112. Uh, hopefully, for the believers out there, we're uh, under 500. And we start to slow down our 2 press count a little bit. We'll, we'll just have to see, we'll have to see. I, I remember, like, like oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, but we have a good Samaritan thing going on here. I'll go first. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where in the actual like human theory pass we are at one hour, 14 minutes. Like how far are we behind? <laughs> you know, sacred. Of like the human task or the actual task? I mean, if you want to give the actual task, you can go ahead. Maybe I'll do the human task. I'm going to keep that yeah, secret. Yeah, you don't want to spoil it. I was saying, I like how the level, like in the top right, the character changes on the based on the active character. Yeah, a lot of neat little uh, visual stuff included, just for a little bit of a... have another thing going on. 3-4, yeah, so we're, we're like a full chapter behind. That's okay. 30 we're doing minutes. our best here. 30, <laughs> you are behind the human test by 30 minutes. Actually not as bad as I thought. <laughs> you only have to wait for like, what, two megabytes? That's not terrible. Fortunately, it's only going to get worse. I'll mention that now. So John asked flipless challenge after this. That's actually something I'm really interested in. Uh, maybe tossing the, the next challenge test after this. That'd be really cool. There's been a so I I basically spearheaded this challenge, but a lot of community members worked on the uh, that true a button challenge or flipless challenge, and it's a it's a really cool watch from all the clips we've done so far. It'd be really cool to see a full test maybe in the future. Way too many really cool routes, uh, strats for the uh, apron chunk. Okay, good. <laughs> when you guys mentioned uh, if it was faster or not, I try to remember if it was if I went down the elevator or not. It may actually be slower because we don't jump, but who knows? I want to try to be at least somewhat fast to make up for the the long <laughs> the longness of it. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah, always such, <laughs> it's always such a tease when you're approaching something where you're like, oh, you have to jump here. <laughs> am what I, am I going to jump or am I not going to jump? And then it's just a clean, solid jump, and you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, not for here, so that's one more thing, but at least we could do this. So um, this is what I was talking about earlier. We're just gonna ignore it. <laughs> so uh, it just works out that way. Remember, anytime we want to switch pixels, it's two additional two presses. So switching to Boomer would actually just been a net negative. So just keeping Slim because we need Slim here. So even though we spent a jump getting into that pipe, um, it's yes, better. Yes, this will to... be on YouTube after. Yeah, this will be on YouTube. So you guys can watch all all the <laughs> six hours back again. Um, so the raw test is going to be on my channel, uh, Everything ABC. Uh, I think maybe this is going to go on the SPM community channel. I'm not sure yet, though. That's up to this JCR. Yeah, that's up to JCR. Hopefully that's the case. That'd be cool. I think it will. All right, now we switch to Boomer. It's a little bit confusing. We do need Boomer for 3-1. I love seeing those bricks explode. It's like such a <laughs> yeah. weird thing to have happen in the game. Uh, once again, the uh, the return pipe just is way too costly, so we're just going to go back the long way. That's going to be a theme for next however long. 
I'll do it, JCR. Yes, let's go. Yeah, everything from this weekend should be uploaded, including the pit race and any percent race. Yeah, that's really cool. Any percent race might take a little bit because there was some stream issues. <laughs> I guess we mentioned the, that pipe there. If we were to find a way to get out of bounds on that seam um, and have our respawn position behind that pipe, we could fall out of bounds and respawn on top of the pipe. Um, fortunately, just not really possible to be out of bounds and have a respawn position right behind the pipe. We're actually going over here. Um, oh. We have Boomer, so <laughs> let's... Um, Blow up this wall. Uh, skip that animation. Who needs it? Don't worry, the bomb. The wall actually did blow up. We'll see later. Because <laughs> we have Boomer right now, we don't want to switch to Boomer later. Just a small little detour there. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, we're not going to be doing any uh, flop site early. So, might as well just do it now. There's another place later in the run. I think 5-4 uh, in the painting room where you use Boomer, but, like, you go off screen, so you don't watch the animation. It's a little time save. I didn't know you could do it there, too. Yeah, Zach's kind of... Zach's, like, shown the entire way of doing the painting room optimally, but doesn't really explain it. <laughs> and now with the FLC ladders, it's a completely different thing. All right, now we're on to chapter three. Uh, I both love and hate this chapter for various reasons. The three dash one's really cool, though. See ya, Tippy. We'll see you in uh at the end of this chapter. But the real question is, do we get Barry? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Useless pixel. That's the most, I'm gonna say right there, that's the most disappointing two press in the entire run. That small little gap we have to jump over. I tried so hard to get over that. It just didn't get my word. No megabyte in this room. Yeah, no megabyte in this room. This is where I found the, uh, the jumping off the Koopa thing. That's where I found that on accident. Onto the underground section. This is really cool. Conveniently, there is one Koopa in 3D here. So, uh, you know what to do. Yeah, we're doing another one of these. I love looking at the 3D bar while that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we're actually gonna kick it. And nice little shell jump there. One HP again. Oh great, There's one HP again. Why is this guy always uh, really putting us on the edge of our seats? Thankfully, uh, once again, saved by the the bell here. Another mushroom, just conveniently right when we're at one HP. So we can't go above to the warp zone. That takes a jump. We're gonna we're gonna take the uh, slower way here. Shout outs to the SMB1 level designers. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna move these Koopa shell Koopa striker guys. I don't even know their official name. I forgot there was a hole there. Yeah, so this hole is actually gonna be useful. Uh Gonna bounce off on the shells as it goes under, and just, just <laughs> do that. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of weird design choices in this game. Like, why is there even a pit there? I don't think there's anything down there. I think it's just an actual pit. 
Just to save the two that's all it's there for. Yeah, the, uh, this is the uh, conspiracy where the two button challenge is uh, intentional by the game developers. Another one? Okay, I think this might be one of the last home button buffers of the new button. I may be wrong though, there might be some later on. Yeah, I think this is one of the ones from now. Cora, thanks for the uh, raid. Welcome to the premiere, the two button challenge. And welcome to Raiders. And yeah, this is why we switched the boomer so long ago. We need it for this castle. Castle? SR? <laughs> and time for the Bowser fight. Um, pretty typical. Nothing really crazy. We have Boomer, so we can just damage Bowser. I feel like Boomer. I try to make it entertaining, but we do have a low level compared to what we maybe used to seeing. Unoptimal. <laughs> I just like seeing Bowser jump on the bomb. There he goes again. I think you would learn by now not to do that. My bad RNG. I need a reset. Yeah, actually not that bad. Quoting Bowser. <laughs> yeah. It happens when you use him. I mean, you use Boomer when he's jumping, right? Yeah, it's that. It's always when he jumps and he gets hit by Boomer. But I still don't understand why that he's like ten units above the ground after landing. And uh, we pick up Bowser here. Yeah, this was a really, really good chapter for us. Only uh, one, two press at this point. There was an idea to get this to press here. There's a hammer bro that exists, but he's too high to like pick up or anything. I was thinking maybe if you wait long enough, he'll like fall off the platform, but I never saw it happen. If we were able to get um, that hammer bro to fall, we'd save a two press. Maybe in the future. Okay, so time for the water level. You imagine, probably not great for a two button challenge for a swimming level. But we do switch to throw here, and it's actually quite important. But if you carry an item, or literally anything underwater with throw, um, you don't swim, but you still jump like normal. It's, I think it's like slightly lower gravity. So it's gonna help us save a few two presses. Uh, probably not a good idea to go under the uh, the whirlpool. So we're gonna get this blooper. Wait for this guy to fall very, very slowly. <laughs> what we're we gonna do with this blooper? Nice little damage boost there. So when Blooper goes above the water and it enters, it sinks down lower than it normally used to going through. Make sure to keep that area in mind for later. It'll be probably cooler the next time you see it. <laughs> in maybe four hours. Yeah, it takes some patience. <laughs> no damage boost there. And we keep the cheap cheap. So already at nine, not great. And this room is not gonna help us either because now we don't have anything to grab. So we'll just have to, you know, tank it a few, few, few swims. 
Coin Town's gaining pretty high, actually. Alright. And, uh... Wait. Mari, you're supposed to get the gold bar. Wait. I think I forgot to get the gold bar, actually. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, not going to be having uh, any... Surprisingly, no gold bar clips throughout the entire task. So, um... That's wild, right? So yeah, throw them now to pay for respects. Gold bars gonna be trapped in that chest forever. That is a reminder. I, I I think Phaser mentioned it earlier, but yeah, it just takes way too many to do a single gold bar clip. You need to switch the flim, uh, slim, not flim. That's the other guy. Yeah. Switch the slim, throw <laughs> a, a, a gold bar, and uh, jump into the gold bar, and then switch again. Also, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Optimal. <laughs> That was satisfying. Very satisfying. So uh, just the gold bar just unfortunately takes way too many two presses. It used to have one single use, but that use is no longer a thing. And now it's time for the actual best pixel of the entire run. Took long enough. But we have Fudley here. And you might be thinking, I mean, if you if you speedrun this game, you know why Fudley's so important, but it's even more important in this challenge. And you'll see why in just a second. So Thudley has the weird property where if you push the one button on the ground, he'll do a grounded Thudley jump, we'll call them. Uh, so it's a, basically a smaller jump for free. And, uh, okay, so now we're going to use the return pipe. Huh? Uh, ah. Yes. So, unfortunately, ah. taking, uh, going back up that water, like, because we fell quite a bit down there. Swimming back up then would have taken way too many two presses. So we'll just, you know, we, we enjoyed three dash one the first time. Let's just do it all over again. <laughs> I love a little question mark by three two. Like, yeah, are, like, we? are we are we technically at three dash two still? <laughs> Sequence based, yeah. At least we'll get to see a little showcase of just how good Budley is. He's Yeah, so like, remember that one jump? Yeah, but it's it's not even an issue anymore. <laughs> so it's not quite, it's a jump replacement, but it's not as good as you might think. So a, a max height jump, I think it was like 127 and some odd units. The max you can get with Fudley is around 76, um, but most of the time it's 74. So you go about three fifths as high as uh, you normally would from a normal jump, but it's still like much better than anything else we've had so far. You also just Fudley jump for free. Yeah. Yeah, for anyone who is who doesn't know about the other jumps, um, four frames after you cancel your like the thirty pounds, you can press A, and it lets you flip. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some of those. Oh, we'll definitely see many of those. They still take two presses to do a thirty jump because you have to press two when you're you know wobbling in air. Yeah. But we'll definitely still use it because it's great to skip stuff. So we use actually Thudley. Thankfully, we don't have to do the uh, Koopa Striker thing again. We just go skip that. Yeah. Remember how much like we had to do to like, get past all this? Thudley just makes it so much more convenient. Uh, and as you saw, we saw we got another mushroom. We were getting low on HP again, so good thing we had that mushroom there. And it's just, it's just beautiful. So technically that was only one two press um, that we're going to have to save here, but playing through that chapter again. Fudley's just pretty overpowered. But now it's becoming a question like, we're still going to need some other pixels, use other pixels later on, so... The question is, is it better to switch over off of Fudley, or is it better to skip stuff with Fudley? That's a big routing thing. Another mushroom there, now we're back to full. So now we get to do this again, but now we don't have throw. We have Thudley, but, you know, Thudley is just so great. Let's go underwater, Thudley. Mm -hmm. sauce, hundo! Should've gone back for that. I think it went straight into the pit. <laughs> eh, I'm sure we could still get it if we go far enough down. So another... Kind of sad thing about Thudley though is that not only do we have a shorter jump with Thudley, but we also don't go very far. Kind of, kind of locked into this path. We only go like, I forget how many units, but it's, it's like two blocks. Very limiting. But uh, like I said, way better than anything else we've had so far. We want to try to keep Thudley as long as possible. 
Another useful thing with Fudley, though, I think we saw it a little bit earlier, but if you, uh, you know, as you're falling, you Fudley, like, you initiate a Fudley ground pound, and then you cancel it. Um, you kind of, like, reset your gravity. So we're, we're going to call those Fudley hovers. We might see a few here. Um, like that. So it allows us to cross just a little bit further of gaps, because we're not going to be falling for as long. Coming up to the blooper fight here, that's going to be interesting. Another one of the bosses where it doesn't really matter what our attack is, you just have to hit them enough times. You don't know how this fight works. Uh, you need a ground pound, or well, spoiler, we're gonna be ground pounding here, but uh, you need to hit the uh, the red tentacle uh, three times, and it just ends the fight. Yeah, uh, I only mentioned about the text mashing. Thankfully, all the normal text boxes you can push one to skip it. You could actually ground pound these tentacles to stay in the air, so you don't have to constantly keep. Losing health to the pit. I think either I'm bad, which might be the case, or it's just not possible to ground pound the red tentacle until it becomes tangible. Yeah, it's uh, that's only true after you hit it the first time, which is why you yeah, well, that's why we're saying you kind of always of switch to Bowser so you can hit it before it even goes down. Yeah, so now we were able to uh, hit it enough times, and there we go. That's the fight. Uh, that's not me swimming. That's a cutscene. Don't worry. You look at the input display. I'm not, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. <laughs> All right. And that's uh, that's two dash. Oh, not two. Three dash two. We basically played like three levels in one there. So <laughs> I'm gonna get met with the most vertical level in the game next, which will be very fun. Oh yeah. So we just got our real first jump replacement, and now it's time for a very vertical level. So we'll try our best to optimize it as much as we can. But it's just so many jumps. This level is the bane of um, two-button pressing runner's existence. <laughs> for sure. Very difficult. So as you can see, I didn't even reach that first ledge, so we do have to take a jump there. Even jumps that you might think we could make with Dudley, we can't. Because the um, the ground pan animation, um, the actual, like, right of Mario goes higher than where he actually is. So it looks like we go higher. And uh, oh, no, okay, so now we're poisoned. <laughs> that's, that's good. I guess I'm taking a bunch of damage here. Hopefully we're able to do these Dudley jumps in time before the next damage. That's good. Yeah, all these jumps are just so unfortunately out of reach for Fudley, so we have to take quite a few two presses. Poison will be useful very soon, actually. Interesting you said that. Yeah, so surprisingly, Poison can be to our advantage. Right now it's not very useful. It's actually kind of hurting us quite a bit. Probably shouldn't do that again. We're, we're at 8 health. Oh, wait. No, we got him. Okay, we can do it again if we really want to. <laughs> Another ledge, that's just too much. Actually, let's just do it now. <laughs> so this is where actually poison is useful. So we need to switch to Bowser anyway, so let's do it here. And we'll uh, barely make that jump. We need poison to make that clear that ledge. So we need to be Bowser and we need a poison um, to make it from that first ledge. Because we just don't get enough distance with Fubbly. So if we cancel the Fudley Ground Pound with a Poison damage, we're able to cross it, just get a few more units to make the jump, which is crazy. And yeah, we're just still Poison, so... <laughs> very costly yeah, for our health. Yeah, because much wider, but you don't have to cross as much distance. Yeah, just, just a larger hitbox. All things work out that way. Now it's time for the inside of the tree. 
Uh, we don't have a gold bar clip, so it looks like we're going to have to do this the long way. And uh, surprisingly, it's still uh, advantageous to us to uh, do the tree normally, then clipping out of bounds. <laughs> still taking poison damage. Does poison have like a set amount of time or is it a set amount of damage? It's a set 10 HP. Oh, okay. But it's not exactly like said do 10 HP worth of damage. It's just that there's enough time on the. It's a, it's a timer basically. Oh! It's, it's worth it. So it's like set to be 10 HP, but you would probably do some weird like lands. Yeah. Maybe not 10 HP. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I wonder if home buffers would make that timer pass in the background. It like doesn't. And unfortunately, it doesn't. That was actually one of the big ideas because it would be really helpful to be able to home bu uh, buffer bounce in 2D, and the poison would allow you to do it, but it just doesn't work that way, sadly. Uh, Semi normal uh, tree here. I uh, just said that, and now we're doing whatever we're doing here. All cycle based here. So after a little bit of waiting, I'm sure that green guy is going to be uh, helpful to us. Maybe. How nice of him. Yeah, went all this way. We actually did make him turn around down there. I'm going to use him right here. Let's get up there. This is kind of just show how powerful Thudley is. Imagine if we didn't have Thudley here. Just we basically have to play this tree normally. We actually probably would need to go quite quick. I just need amount of two presses, but probably makes it so much nicer. Oh, you don't reset the room anymore? Oh, not anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, we used to reset the room, but... We were able to go fast enough so that these guys are still here in time. Uh, one one jump for the entire uh, inside of the tree so far. It's pretty cool. And uh, some more waiting, because obviously we need to wait here. Oh, I think I saw something. Yep, another, another green guy. So nice of them just be here. Get up here. Another reason why I should be a, a low level at this point, so we're able to maximize our jumps off of the uh, the tire lords. Nice. He gets to ride the platform. It's such a good timing. We are gonna reset the room here, though. So that's that's where we reset the room now. Only to just re uh, because the tire lords have moved. This will reset them to where they initially spawned. So now there's the the blue tire lord there. And once again, very conveniently for the task, um, we have a super mushroom here that we thought would help. I don't know how he does it. Every time, every time he goes so low on HP. How many two presses was that up the tree? Only one. Oh, and it was actually really close. There might be a way. I have a theory. I haven't fully tested to do it in zero, but it just, I don't think it's going to work. It involves hitting a switch out of bounds. Um, but it's just something as a way to hit it out of bounds. There's the one that's like, uh, it's hard to talk about because like, I'm sure no one really plays the tree casually much anymore, but there's one uh, that's within a ceiling above spikes that you need to hit with Boomer. If we were able to hit that without pressing 2 with Dudley, then it would save a 2 press. Something to maybe look into for the future. So we have a Dementia fight here. Uh, best to not to take too long. Oh, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Could have been better, could have better RNG, but that's the best I could have done without crazy RNG manipulation. <laughs> uh, the beauty of low tech. You can get away with some stuff like that. Anyways, uh, we just got that super mushroom, so we're back to... Well, we were at full HP. Took a few hits during the Dementia fight, but... Somehow, like, I have a feeling we're going to take a whole bunch of damage again. It just seems like the case every time we pick up a, a mushroom. Oh, even to... better. Imagine doing the Dementia RNG and then the Wind RNG straight <laughs> Oh, after. yeah. 
So, uh, there's a Lactus in this room, and he throws Spinies. Let's use a few of them to get up this tree more. Really, <laughs> really helpful that the Super Mushroom is there. We got some good one in here. Oh, he's he's following us. <laughs> oh, oh only you had to throw out to throw him off the map. Bro really <laughs> wanted to be lack of Lester. All right, that surprisingly, only uh, 14 two presses for the tree, which is pretty good considering what it is. Yeah, and, well, uh, the tree went amazingly. This next level, it's like oh, hell of uh, prompts and passwords. Yeah, so if you know fun. much about this level, you might start to realize how much this is going to hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up, Phantom? If only we found a uh, some sort of sequence break here, that would have been huge. Coming up on to press number 200, kind of. I wonder when that'll be. Might be sooner than you might think. <laughs> I'm really hesitant. I, it might even be 3-4. This is ouch level. Yeah, this is a very... This is uh, the second... I'll say this is the second most two press heavy level. Purely just from all of the passwords and prompts and keys. Oh yeah, because there's the... <laughs> I wonder what the most two press heavy level is. We'll, we'll get there. Surely it's not this one. Yeah, so once again, just another routing thing. We could have switched to throw and uh, probably saved a, like, a, a jump, but just switching pixels takes too much. So, looks like we carry skip. Yeah, we're uh, not going to get Carrie. Carrie asks you, I think, three questions, and you have to answer them. So yeah. not only that, but also getting out of the dungeon. Even more two presses. Yeah, getting into the dungeon, answering Carrie's prompts, and then uh, switching to Carrie and switching back off of Carrie's to make two presses. And you also have to jump up to the door after being on the spikes. Yeah. It's just also helpful that, because... Pudley is used there for those doors. Okay, another crappy jump. There is a theory to have this uh, this robot spawn those cats and reach down below the home button buffer bounce, but I don't think it works out that way. I try. You know, a lot of theories that you know maybe enough testing you can make them work, but from what I've done, it just doesn't work out. I saw 8-3 mentioned in the chat. Um, stick around for 8-3. It's eight one, of those, three, one of the most yeah. optimized levels. 8-3 is crazy. It's faster to do those doors left to right. Maybe? Uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think it really matters for our purposes. It doesn't save or you know, change the 2 plus time. It wouldn't matter if we did carry or didn't do carry skip. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's question one, question two, question three, four for the password. Yep. <laughs> and that's just Another. that's just one of many for this chapter. Another three for the other door, and then like ten at the cat door. Yeah, that's and there's lot. and there's even more than that. <laughs> First key of two. Is it faster to do the doors up right? I don't know if someone answered that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if they can move. Yeah, and we also need to beat Peach for the Francis fight, so that's another. We have to switch over to Peach. Just to add on the cherry on top. And, and you uh, really don't want to be Peach for the post-chapter either, so you're just going to have to switch right off again. 
Mario is just too needed for everything in this game. Uh, but there is a silver lining. We get to do carry skip. And we don't have a gold bar, so we're gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way. But, um... We're gonna optimize it. Oh my god, this is just brutal. Uh, home, home button. Oh, never mind. So, um... In addition to being able to, like, do the home button uh, buffers, um, if you take 3D meter damage and hit a ceiling, your momentum doesn't get stopped by the ceiling. So you're able to, like, uh, keep jumping up, and you'll just slide along the ceiling. So you get a little bit more distance this way. Wow. Yeah, this is only going to be 3x across this gap. It used to be, like, 6 or 7 just with Dudley Hovers. Yeah, it, if, uh, at the beginning, it was 6 both ways, and now it's only 3. Also, it's a good point. It was supposed to be in actually two, but uh, it's just not quite in distance. All right, time to do the whole thing again. Uh, question one, question two, question three, four for the password. <sighs> like we do all that work to optimize the, the carry skip, and it just, uh, you know, just, at what cost? So yeah, in comparison. Um, if we would do the uh, gold bar clip method, we would need to spend two to switch the slim, uh, spend two to throw the gold bar, uh, maybe one to jump into the gold bar, and then two to switch back to Fubbly. So then in total that's like uh, seven. And that's for both ways, so this is a lot better. And we have to do it all again, going back to the other. So you guys can see it one more time. So for a regular any percent before like the gold bar clips were found, this was the main strat obviously without the whole menu buffers. You would do Yeah, that. if you were crazy enough to go for it. I think some people did it like once in practice and it was a huge accomplishment. And technically uh, this was, it's like, faster. It is faster, yeah. yeah. Um the old uh the old tests did it, which is how I found out about it. I think there they did in six because they didn't optimize for yeah, two button obviously. All right, not too terrible. I mean, we're we're at twenty four. It's pretty high, but it's nothing like maybe one of the higher ones we've seen so far. But it's not too bad. Sure hope something. Sure hope it doesn't increase double. <laughs> I yeah. sure hope a funny giant cat door doesn't ask me a bunch of questions about pop culture. Not only that, but I sure hope they don't have me switch the peach, input a key, input another key. <laughs> Here we go. Question 1, question 2, question 3, question 4, question 5, question 6, question 7, question 8, question 9, question 10. And um, <laughs> we're still we're still not even done with the questions because we have the uh, the Francis segment coming up. The, uh, the dating sim. That's another 4. We did optimize the dating sim segment, of course. Hot babe in Rome. T2ID. Oh my god, Francis, hurry up with your selection, dude. Do you have like a thing going on here? It's taking too long. Would have just been better if you just skipped this whole thing. Only you could skip this. Unfortunately, it is hard coded. That would've been cool if it was like, um, like you like the fastest route. You actually have to like do the dating sim correctly. Like your actions actually matter to like be fast or to save two presses. <laughs> Imagine if they had like good and bad endings. That would yeah. be cool. Instead, we have just button mashing basically. Unfortunately, a theoretical skip probably will never be found for it because technically this is all one giant cutscene the moment you step into the room and the mm. trigger to start the fight is in that cutscene. Yeah, it makes yeah, it so horrible to try and practice uh, shopless Francis. You, get, you gotta do that every time. 
you can't even spawn into the room with practice codes without crashing. You have to, like, go out, get Peach, and then go in through the door. Okay. Well, at least we get to see the fight as Peach instead of switching to Bowser. So, at least that's cool. Don't have the extra damage, but, you know, something new. Only we have the uh, nice storm or something. That's great. I, we're getting really lucky here. Uh, with uh, going where Francis is going to spawn. Did you theoretically use Merle's charms anywhere? That was a good because uh, I think Merle's charms gives you life streams, but uh, as we'll soon see, we don't. We get life streams in a different way. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a level up, so now we don't have to hear the, uh, the low HP thing. So that's cool. But yeah, that was a lot of, one of the cool theories. I wish it was a thing, but uh, getting the Merle's Charms takes too many two presses. And uh, at, at that point where we do have access to the charms, it's just not helpful. When does she move into the house? It's like after chapter five, right? The, I think so. Because that's when you can start the Piccolo side quest. 43 in one level, that's not. Nice. At least we're under 200. That's yeah, gonna be at 199. Maybe, maybe we'll just stay at 199 and just never have to press 2 again. <laughs> So yeah, a breakdown of that level, so it's 43 in total, um, I think, I mean, I could, I could actually look at this, the breakdown, um, scroll down on my sheet here, so out of the 43, or, um, 3-4, a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them were for actual gameplay reasons, and all the rest are for menuing and passwords and prompts. Theoretically, it could go a little bit lower, but most of it is just, uh, just you have to deal with it. And like, six of those are just to skip carry, which we could have just gone and get and skip all the gameplay, basically. But it's just not overall better. All right, I think we're making pretty good time. I mean, we're at what, almost two hours, three chapters in. Might be saying some kind of record here. I mean, normally you'd be in like 5 3 by now, but we're making good time. We're doing okay. Actually, I could give another funny update of where the human pass is at this point. Got oh. seven. Okay. <laughs> We're, we're using carry, by the way. This is huge. Because we get carry after uh, the... Because we skip them, so we, we get them automatically. So enjoy this while it lasts, because uh, this is the only time we'll use carry throughout the entire test. Oh, I nailed it on the nose. <laughs> yeah, right now the human test is at the end of 5-3. <laughs> wow. And that's the last we're going to use of carry. So if you're, if you're, that's another reason why this is just so long, um, just, just no, just no fast anything. <laughs> Don't even get carry. I mean, but at least this segment is short, I mean, we're literally already at the heart pillar. This is one of the few pre-chapters where there isn't really any tricks, just switch to Fubly, walk around. Pretty simple one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sadly, no carry. You know what they say. Well, like surprising. You hike up a mountain, you hike back down it. Back to the elevator. Yep, no return pipe. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, like... Actually, no, I don't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't think Dashiell has any theoretical use for 2BC, because you have to switch to him, which you just don't ever want to do. Like, it would speed you up a little bit, but... I think I the think one that place it would have been useful is for that first jump in 3-1. I think that's about it. If you had uh, Dashiell at that point. Oh, you but, could hey, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think if you had enough speed, you'd just be able to clear it. If it's a two-block wide gap, then yeah. All right, I think it's up dash one yeah, This is where we would split here and be funny. There's that in their split, so... You just have to imagine it. I was gonna slam my keyboard, but uh, I remember that I'm the one that's streaming. I don't want to accidentally <laughs> turn everything off. Yeah, you just, you just see the uh, the stream cut off. Be unfortunate. And we had two hours. Nice. Oh, wait, two I hours, two hundred and three, two presses. Disconnect my numpad. There, split. <laughs> nice. A little bit late there. I should just skip the split at this point. You see, it's when when Mario suck a game. Which begs the question, why can't he breathe in space, but he can breathe underwater? Well, a wise yeah. man once brought up the theory that Mario is a fish. Yeah, in some games he can't. Well, in some games he could breathe underwater. In some games he can't. Maybe he's only a fish some of the time. Maybe this is, this is my game theory. Sometimes we see Mario, fish Mario, and other times he's a normal Mario. What is like an auto fire? Uh, I think they mean like turbo. So it's it's allowed, obviously, for the task. It's, it's task. <laughs> yeah, you probably just copy pasted a bunch of one inputs when you needed them. That's right. Oh, I didn't even. I, I just right clicked on the one checkbox, which is not even that good. Because sometimes it can skip a few of that. Uh, it's just, I didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> if you mean auto-fire by, like, a controller, a two-press is still a two-press. It doesn't matter what's pushing it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to go philosophical and be like, well, I'm not doing this with my controller. So this is actually one of the few NPCs. Um, weirdly enough, some NPCs, in order to talk to them, you can't hold any buttons. So you see, we let go of two there because we had to. A few other NPCs in the game, you just have to let go of everything. So no, uh, no two button help here. Uh, what, whatever we're we gonna do. See, watch. He lets okay, we're the good. fish out, but he doesn't let the water out. Oh. That's why Mario's a fish. And why he can breathe underwater. He uses his gills. Fret not. He uses his gills to breathe underwater. Man, like, the more and more we go through this task, the more I really wish the, the turnpipe just didn't cost any two presses, so we didn't have to walk back every time. Especially gonna hit hard when we have to go to flop side. <laughs> but we don't have to worry about that for now. Alright, now it's actually time for chapter four. The only return segment that you might want to skip is post chapter six, because you have to jump over that huge thing with Luigi but it's not really a consideration because it's only 1x. So at least like these segments are good because we don't really have to jump anyways. We, we just kind of move around in, uh, in the low grab, or I guess no grab in this section. So Technically this is zero two presses, but nope, there has to be two message confirmation screens. Yep. So the, what the two uh, button does do in these segments is fire. So that's the fire button. I guess I... Probably should have put that in the command, but whatever. 
Um, not really used. I might be thinking, uh, I might have some issues later on, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. enough though, this fire here is actually used with the A button, not the 2 button. So. I don't know why they decided to do it like that, but it's good for us. So yeah, nothing really cool here. I will literally just going to be playing this level as intended. So enjoy this brief moment of normalness before we start to do some crazy stuff again. I really want to shoot those guys, but I don't know, we can't. We'll just play a we'll just play a bullet hell. Oh, we're doing a gamble this time? Oh, the, the gold bars. I wonder if I should. The person who knows the count, I wonder if I should predict in this. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll repeat it here for those who are not at the beginning. Uh, in 2018, so six years ago, the initial count was 625. So the question is, have we saved more than 125 two presses since then? Do that with what you will. Remember to gamble responsibly. Also remember 7-3 exists. 7-3? Is there really no one predicting over 500? <laughs> <laughs> so much faith. Surely, surely the total counts like 208, right? I'm only going to punch it two more times. Being a little bit generous. Who knows what's happening later? If anyone can guess the exact number, you will get a um, million dollars. And no cheaters, because I know the number is on my Google Sheet, so no looking there. <laughs> Who's providing the million? Um, not it. Well, they're hurt, because he's a scam artist. How many coins has that guy accumulated over all these runs? It must be in the millions at this point. Speaking of coins, we do have quite a bit. I wonder what we're going to use them for. Remember, spending stuff in the shop it takes many two presses, so it's probably not going to be that. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. This level is really favorite. cool. I'm yeah, sorry, I was about to say the same cool. thing. <laughs> and the main so reason is that we have... Floaty physics. Oh my god, we were just <laughs> saying the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> floaty physics allows us to jump higher, so Fudley is actually kind of useful here. Uh, more useful than normal. Do we have to jump once here? But other than that, we'll see. <laughs> Some jumps are just too high, even for Thudley. Some Thudley hovers there. Thankfully, Thudley can break these blocks. So. Uh, ignore this. It's, it's not... It's not good. <laughs> just, uh, just ignore... Yep, very, very, very optimal, dude. Very, not, well done. <laughs> Moving on. This so part's clean to me. So we are going to clip out of bounds here. Uh, that's a corner clip. We actually saw it in uh, pre-chapter 3. And uh, that allows us to skip mean slim or thudly jumping over the, uh, the thing. Which is nice. 
happens. Um, some weird wonky collision. Uh, if Mario goes into a corner, I just go past it. Uh, very nice scenery here. Pretty wall circles. We need to uh, wait here just a little bit. Nothing crazy. All right, there we go. I think these guys are called choppas. Yep. I'm just gonna use it. Right. Also, I'm gonna ruin everyone's day. The background uh, it crops off weird in the middle. <laughs> I don't I'm see not. It. Oh no. Oh, I I see it. That's so bad. <laughs> there we go. It's almost as bad as a certain door in Chapter 8. It is unbelievably sad how many different doors there are of that. Oh, yeah. At least, like, these rooms have, like, a lot of enemies. So, at least it's... Oh, pause menu. Long pause menu. What yeah, that's all about. Like, almost all of the doors in 3-4 are misaligned with the background, and it is hilarious to me. Our good friends Fuzzies here. They're doing the 4-2 grind, but a little differently than you might be used to. Yeah, we're, we're not grinding for points. Instead, we're gonna get uh, a few of these life streams. <laughs> and by a few... Oh, well, we'll just see. Let's just say well, there's not gonna be many Fuzzies in this room anymore. <laughs> Another one. I'm gonna use this one to uh, get up this, uh, this wall. Gonna be ice turbo. Okay, now we just gotta get to this door. Uh, we gotta, gotta get to that door. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait for another megabyte. Let's just go. Just roll the two out of the way. You can use so, this megabyte this one's time named to Ian? Is this one going to be named Ian? I think that's... Okay. I think someone said the first one in 1-4 was named Ian. Okay, so that one's Ian, and then Maggie was the one in 2-2. So what's the, what are we gonna name this one? Marty. Marty. I like that. Marty the megabyte. Yep. What should we talk about this time? The uh, conversation topic. Someone Space just said, food? what happens in underwear? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. I don't even want to think about underwear right now. Oh, I guess maybe we could talk about uh, coin count. Yeah, so this entire time, uh, we've been trying to get as many coins as possible. Uh, yeah, may start to understand why we need all the coins, but we'll just we'll just wait just a little bit longer before we reveal. Because, like we said earlier, fortunately, no meatball man, because talking to him takes one two plus. And even though it's only one, it's still an optimal. So we don't need three hundred, but we do need at least one hundred. Um, also, our level is kind of still low, but. That turbo is going to town down there. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe the ice turbo will get us eventually. There are other things that we do need coins for. Um, obviously, there's the uh, four three. We have to buy a choco bar, um, so we do have to at least shop for one item. But thankfully, that shop is a little bit different. Normally, they uh, prompt you with like. Oh, do you know about our joint, uh, our shop point reward system? Do you know how to even shop? <laughs> Which takes a few two presses, but thankfully that one in 4-3 just goes straight to the business. Buy the choco bar and then you leave. Yeah, you don't even get shop points for it either. Yeah. Big business. So, we are going to use a few coins there, but uh, no other purchases will be made. There is the... And uh, a little bit of spoilers later on, but we do spend a few more coins at the River Twigs. Remember, there's a guy there for a, 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 a modest four coins we could cross a river, and you can imagine how that's useful. 
So it doesn't really account for why we need so many of this one. And, uh, in about we're almost, we're almost at the end of the Mega Bite timer. Just, just bear with us just a little bit longer. I got it. We're gonna get enough coins to inflate the stock market so that all the prices of everything drop. Yes. That's actually exactly it. Oh. Okay. So, a weird thing about Megabytes as well is that sometimes, not only do they only appear in some rooms and some chapters, but they also could only spawn in specific areas of the room. So we actually have to go away from the pipe to even spawn it. Which is weird. All right, we have old man Gramps over here. And uh, he's gonna sell us this paper, and we're gonna purchase it for 100 coins. If we bought it for 10 coins, it was an extra two press, so that's why we needed 100 coins. <laughs> the big reveal. If you if you guessed Old Man Gramps' uh, ancient scroll, then you'd be there. Unfortunately, there's not really many good places to coin grind, so we just try to maximize every time we defeat an enemy, grab a coin from it. Um, gonna wait for this boom boxer to get close enough. Nice. Okay, another pause menu. That was not as long. Typically at this point, if you know, if we're pausing, doing some RNG manipulation. I'm very rudimentary. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the uh, tool for RNG manipulation to work, so I just kind of had to manually do it, which is a pain. I was basically like shiny hunting for Pokemon. <laughs> I just wasted the frame, just checked to see. Wasted the frame in a different way, checked. Uh, kind of slow, but. When, you, when did you do this part? Like, uh, like when in time did yeah. I task it? This was back in like August. So the first of two kind of quote-unquote sessions. So unfortunately, uh, it would be optimal to get more live shrooms. We don't have to go back here, but I just didn't want to spend all this time <laughs> RNG grinding. So we're going to reset the room just so we could make the, uh, get a few more live shrooms without spending too much time RNG manipulating. Time saved for the next one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because John and I have a tool that can input your current RNG and then you could basically predict, like you could get an RNG seed for all fuzzies to have a life shroom. Yeah, that would be so cool. We wouldn't even need to, we could just get them all in one trip. But I did like the math myself, and it was like a one in 10,000 chance for like four. Yeah. I was just not gonna do that by hand. Even three. Like, if you have a room, so at this point, because uh, the fuzzies don't respawn after you kill them, uh, unless you, like, I think we completely restart the chapter. So there's actually only, like, uh, like four more fuzzies left in the room. So the more we kill, the more it takes to RNG manipulate the fuzzy, because less of them can hold a life stream. Yeah, John, I, I asked you for it, and I just couldn't figure it out, <laughs> unfortunately. I think I was probably going to do it with my dolphin version or something, because I, I had a similar issue with the, the input display that you're seeing on screen. I guess I'll, I, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, I'll mention it again later, but huge shout out to uh, Xander. They set me up, with, uh, they're a galaxy tasser, and they set me up, they had this tool, and they specifically helped me set it up for Paper, uh, Super Paper Mario specifically, and it just looks so good, I'm really happy how it turned out. So huge shout out to Xander, I'll mention it again at the end of the task. Okay, it's happening. Hopefully it helps aid some of the, uh, the, uh, the movement and visualize what's, what buttons are being pushed. Chopper one more time, just so we can get over it. There it is. Yeah, 
I, unfortunately, I was too small brained to figure it out. <laughs> Alright. Making our way back. Gonna get Fleet. Um, honestly, more useful than you might think. Um, if you're familiar with any percent speedrun, you might know about Fleet Ledge cancels. We do a total of one in this run. You might imagine where. Okay, another Megabyte is going to spawn, so... Yeah, two for one offer here. If you, if you didn't go to the bathroom before, might want to do it now. For the way <laughs> Fleet Ledge cancels, or like I'll try to explain, if you line up on, I think, most ledges, or any ledge, you can line up in 2D or 3D with the visual cue with Mario's shoes. And you press one and then quickly press up and you can interact with objects from far away. That's how it works for most things, but for some applications in regular any percent, it's a little different. But for doors, it's like usually one than a really fast up press. Yeah, and it's, like, it's also a really cool looking strat. Because you kind of go into like 2.5D. Really cool. At least for doors. Yeah, the one. The chapter 8 door. That one. I think looks really cool. You might not notice, but this guy is slowly moving towards Mario. So, this is just ever so slightly getting closer. The, the hitbox is just great. I'm learning so much about how great the hitboxes are in this game watching this. Surely at some point it's gonna hit Mario, right? Oh, shot up. <laughs> They're not hitting Mario, Just slowly moving. Okay, now I actually have to move. Because he would have hit me there. Still gonna follow us though. <laughs> Still gonna try his best. So, we actually need to spawn. So, like I mentioned before, Megabytes sometimes only appear if you're standing in a specific part of the room. And this is why we couldn't use a Megabyte to skip the first jump of the chapter, because we need to actually be in the middle of the room for it to spawn. So we have to wait for it here. There it is. It looked horrifying in 3D. Yeah. So that's why, even though we're not using it yet, we had to spawn in there before we come down here to get Fleet. I hope you guys enjoyed your bathroom break. I'm sure Fleet enjoyed theirs. <laughs> so yeah, Fleet, not that great of a pixel, but it does have its use cases. There's actually a really cool use case for Fleet in 8-3, but we'll just wait until we get there. And obviously Fleet Ledge cancels. So now we have the Megabyte here. And like I said before, they exist both in 2D and 3D, so you know what that means. <laughs> another Great. another home button buffer bounce. So a weird quirk about megabytes that I don't think is really documented anywhere, it might be wrong, but if you pause, you notice that megabytes actually turning around. Um, which is just really weird that it even happens. It allows us to or, manipulate its position in a good way. Because it does fly away if you wait too long, so... We do kind of need to speed it up to get across this gap. And we also need this, uh... I forgot what these guys are called. Need them to stretch out to cross this gap. Long yeah. I think. Long gator sensor. 
And yeah, we're not switching to Fudley, because we're gonna need Philippe later in 4-3, so... It's one of those examples where even though Fudley is just gonna be better for jumping and stuff, uh, it just takes too many two presses to switch back over. Which is uh, why we're also going to spend a two press to jump into Star Block. It just takes too many to switch back and forth. But that chapter was pretty good. Sub 10. For, uh, pretty pretty good at for this point. We're definitely uh, getting back on pace to uh, be under 500. We'll see if anything thwarts that later. And when we're back in space, so again, we don't really have to do anything special here. We just move around, don't shoot. Oh, with squirps. Um, we do need more life streams in this, but we will see that we're gonna be running out of inventory space. And we grab a shooting star. That's just typical any percent stuff. We use it for the uh, under chomp. Um, not only is it fast, but it's also um, optimal for the two button challenge. Even if I we have... Sorry, go Sorry, ahead. continue. I swear <gasps> you just clipped through that jellyfish. Yeah. Just right through. Great, just great hitboxes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think even if we had, like, max attack, we still couldn't uh, defeat the underchomps in enough uh, two presses. Because I think there's no multi-hit attack. I might be wrong. Excuse me, I might be wrong, though. Um, that is one two press. I think even like Bowser's Fire, I thought it was going to be multi hits now. So, Shooting Star is still optimal. Gonna need to uh, squeeze and twist some uh, squirps into these holes. Those take two presses. Yeah, I think the, uh, the red ones are called Longer Dials, which is really funny. How much time is left in the task? Um, let's do the math here. It's like three hours and 20 minutes, less than three hours, 20 minutes. So we're still not even halfway. <laughs> so, um, plenty of more to do. I love seeing those guys get caught when you fly up here. <laughs> yeah. So this is where we uh, we're gonna shop for the choco bar. I was really wondering if they if there's like really any other way to get it. I don't think there is. At least none that are too far out of the way. It'd be crazy if we just like randomly went like out of our way to like get a choco bar, and maybe cook it with like at the chaperones or something. I don't know how it really works, but it's just too costly. There's uh, choco bars in more than just that show. I'm not sure. I mean, like, I tried looking at, like, reasonable places that don't take too many two presses, and I just couldn't find any. I don't even know if there's any that exist. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. If there is, I don't know about it. Yeah, chapter four, two auto scrollers, two interesting levels. Basically. Fortunately, this one is a bit more two press costly, because we have to also give the chocolate bar. Curious to see if uh, anybody's guessing where we're going to use these six life shrooms. May may not be where you might think we're gonna use them. And we did get six of them for, for various reasons, actually. It's one of the mysteries, I guess. We don't spend them all in one one place. No, it's it's two different chapters, I think, entirely, right? Uh, three actually. Of, of these six that we have here, it's three different. And then we get a few later on, but spoilers. 
<laughs> There's six live streams. Yeah, John, that's why we needed it. That's why I wanted to get the uh, RNG tool because we got those all in the fuzzy room. Okay, so we, we've spent this long with Fleet. It's time to finally switch back over to Fuddly. Fuddly's just too useful. I have a prediction for one of them in 5 4 to get up to the pipe for the Ochon spike. Interesting. <laughs> would have gotten me five in one room. Yeah. It would have been cool to see. There's Bubby Hovers. Oh, another pause there. Must be something in this room. <laughs> yeah, There's probably only one enemy. Okay, we are gonna get a, a block block here. That's another item that we're going to use later. I know it's going to be way ahead in the run, but the block block strat is just so impressive to me. It is. I think it's one of the most creative things in this whole run. The problem is that there's just not a lot of places that... Because it takes two, uh, two presses to use the block block, so there's not a lot of places where it can theoretically save a lot of... Um, uh, save two presses, but we, we managed to find a way. This room is really cool. Uh, Roblox uh, 8192 actually found this strat, and I, I'm surprised it works. But um, I'm gonna lower our uh, 3D meter here. And you see that uh, pig guy up there? We're just gonna bounce off of it. <laughs> Somehow it works. Uh, don't ask me. But obviously, because we take damage, we don't get hit by it, so we're able to just go into its hitbox. But even then, like, Realistically, we shouldn't even be able to reach that high up, but for some reason it just gives it to us. We're not going to question it. <laughs> there was something similar in 3-1 on the second route, when you get Fudley and you have to jump up by the bullet bill blast. Yeah, the bullet bill was also pretty weird. Yeah, it's we like you have a way smaller hitbox when you're ground pounding than you might expect, because you always you hit the bottom of the hitbox, but you can use the top of part of it too. Fortunately, uh, no uh, key uh, early here. I'm gonna be going around the long way. And I'll use this guy to get up here. Another reason yeah. why we need to be a, a low attack here, because we need to bounce off that guy three times. Yeah, you can skip all of this, this annoying room. Um, you can skip going to get the upside down chest by being like at the bottom of the room like you normally would and then you just use the whole menu and buffer damage while you're doing the rubber jump it saves about a minute in a regular 90% run. Yeah the problem here is that we would have to jump into the chest or here we just you know walk to it. There's also an interesting um, quirk there. You can't use Thudley to hit the switch blocks. You need to bounce off an enemy. So that's why we kind of waited there, waiting for the enemy to come below us. Yeah, and right. in the, the four walls room, I don't know if you guys have a better name, we also need to do that. Yeah, you would think that ground pound those uh, dimension blocks would work. It just doesn't. So here again, like you need to hit this to exit the room. We also need to actually exit the room. That jump is too high for Thudley, but that's okay, because we're just going to uh, wait for this yellow tower to come up and just bounce off it like that. This room had so many <laughs> Tyloids, so gotta use at least one of them. It's really cool, like, uh, like seeing like when some of these like two presses were improved. I think that was like one of the early on ones, but some of these like were surprisingly like improved pretty recently as of like a few years ago. I think that was like one of the ones found in 2019. <laughs> now we're, you know, 80% of the on through just get all the entire thing, but here we are. Every time I have to use the key, 
unfortunate every time you have to use it. Game loves giving us keys. This room's also unfortunate. Just have to do it normally. So many like ideas and theories on how to like do this and maybe just one jump, but none of them worked. Idea involving poison. Even then, like just this is unfortunate whenever we all all these like clever workarounds, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. What, what, what Here it's pretty cool. Ground wouldn't work. No, it doesn't go high enough. Aww. Yeah, it's like it's even more than like a hundred units. I'm pretty sure you would need like a max height. This does not go far enough. Because like um, from the top of the block, we we tried the idea of poison because like we did in a three dash three where we could cross a larger gap with the poison interrupt. But um. It, even then, we just barely don't make the, the distance. Uh, but then we also have the question, like, how do we get poison? Okay, another pause here. Well, speaking of poison, we're gonna, we're gonna grab a poison shroom here. Uh, the puzzle pieces might be adding up together. So I, I did kind of lie. We are gonna be doing at least one chest early here. Um... We can actually go the normal path and only spend one jump, but this is cooler and I think a little bit faster, even with waiting for the 3D meter. Poison into a live stream and then jump to the top? Um, yes, but we would need to... Uh, getting poisoned is a whole other issue, and I think even then, uh, Thudley, the initial Thudley jump would just not be good enough. And a lot of theories were put into that room, because it's, it's another annoying, like, it seems like it should be possible, but everything we've tried so far didn't work. At least these blocks are nice. Like, even though we can't, like, Thudley into the block, we can, uh, kind of do that and fall under the block. At least we have that one for us. Right, time for the uh, the Mr. L fight here. Fun fact with that second chest, it works if you just kind of use throw with the right time and jump into it. We don't know, I I don't know why, but maybe someone else knows why that just works. To be honest, I still don't know why it works. <laughs> How do, why does any of this work? That's, that's a real question. I'm gonna try our best here. Thudley uh, does give us double damage, which is nice. Even if these fights take too long for our level. Yeah, it's very over. Uh, but speaking of taking too long, so kind of hinted at this earlier, but if you remember, the two button does have a use in these uh, space sections, and they uh, they're used to fire. You kind of need to do uh, what is it? 256 HP to this guy without firing. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, but thankfully, you know, Thudley comes in clutch once again. We're going to do a total of three damage per Thudley jump. <laughs> or not Thudley jump, but per ground pound. Um, there is a, at least a little bit something we could do to speed up. Uh, surprisingly, the attack up. Uh, Power up doesn't do anything, but at least we could do this when we have a barrier. It does go away fast, and uh, it's gonna take a while. So oh my gosh, we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna wait here. This is actually where I'm gonna take a quick break. It's just gonna be a repeating of this for the next uh, around six minutes. <laughs> so I'll be right back. If anything happens, let me know. Oh, they don't think so. A heads up, by the way, this fight used to be over 10 minutes long, and now it's down to around 5 to 6 minutes using the more precise barrier hits. Um, before this, we actually just used one hit per shield, and uh, it was very, very slow. Also, the thing about the red candy is it only increases your attack by half, and then it rounds it down. It's kind of stupid the way it works when your level is this low. Yeah, that's pretty strange.
it didn't even occur to me that like you would have to spam too. But thankfully, yeah, you can just do this. This takes long ass. I think that's what makes this challenge like more interesting to me than maybe Super Mario 64 A button, because the two button does so many different things in this game. Stuff you wouldn't think of at first. Yeah. Like the the biggest two button thing I'm kind of hinting at. Um, it's not what you would expect, at least. The most dense part of two buttons. So. If you were to switch to Bowser, would you still only do 3 damage? I don't think so. The defense works kind of weird in this game. Uh, I'm pretty sure it would be something, but... I think Probably not, not worth the extra compresses. Well, because you have Buggy and not Gary, you're taking a lot of... Like, you can't move as well, and I think Bowser would just get hit by everything. Oh, you're right. You can't flip. Yeah. That makes sense. And also two two buttons. Come yeah. on, we're not least in that. But it's also not just two because we need Mario in the post chapter to go into 3D, so it'd be actually four. I will pop in to say that um we so a few years ago we would need to, so the reason why we couldn't like level up a bit more and make this fight faster is because we need to be a lower level actually very late into the run to bounce off an enemy a few more times. But I think as of late, there's been a routing change that would probably allow us to get at least like one more attack up to make this fight go a little bit faster. But I didn't really go through the entire routing process when making this. And there's also just not many good places to farm for XP without jumping. The best idea was actually probably would be in the uh, 4-2 room. So maybe, maybe in a in the distant future, when maybe this gets a version two, it'll be optimized more. Can someone get me up to speed on what's going on? So this is a low optimized, tool assisted speed run of an any percent run. Pressing the two button as little as possible. And a two press is defined as like when you press and release it, I think. So for most of the run, it's gonna be held down, except for a few cases. Uh, Mario Plus Gaming actually mentioned about the red chocolate bars. Uh, I think they only increase your shooting power, not your actual attack. Because we actually just grabbed one, but as, as we'll see in a second, I think we still only do 3 damage. If, if it actually does increase it, that was a huge oversight on my end. I don't think it's this we'll see in a second. Yeah, still only 3. Gamer Squiddy asks how many 2 presses a normal any percent run would have. Uh, since you jump at the start of every room for the acceleration <laughs> boost, a lot. Way over a thousand. Let, let's not forget mashing. True, you guys do mash with one and two as well. So. Hey, yeah, I'm actually probably ten thousand then. Give it, give it five digits. Hey, Can we beat the boss. Let's go. Hope you all enjoyed your break. If you took one, <laughs> fucking turkey and cheese sandwich. Let's go. <laughs> that made Just me for my nap. I wonder, I think a casual run, like if you're not speedrunning and if you match through dialogue with just the one button, it'll probably be in the thousands, I would guess. Assuming like you do it perfectly, just like without really caring about the two button. Gamer Squiddy is indeed not blind, I can confirm. Uh, yeah, so that was actually a really good chapter. This is actually the chapter of the fewest two presses. Um, in total, I think it's 34. And uh, if you remember, 3 4 alone was 43, so we're, we're doing good. We're, we're definitely back on pace for a sub 500.
I also have a whole bunch of wacky items. To... We'll see when we use all of them. They're all there for a reason. We actually do have room for uh, one more item. And I think if we do a different route that's a little bit slower, we could actually free up two inventory slots here. But there's just no real reason to. Uh, maybe in the future, if we do have the possibility if we need to get more items. At a certain point, there was actually, we had no room for items. In fact, we actually struggled to work around because we needed one more live stream at a certain point. We just didn't have the inventory space. We were thinking like, maybe we should get like a mystery box later in the run <laughs> um, to maybe like spawn a live stream or something. So just like wild theories, but eventually we just kind of lowered the amount of live streams we needed. The mystery boxes just use the item. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm pretty sure it's only Merly's spells where it drops the item. I know, um, if you use a mystery block, you can get a, a block block. So, if you needed to, like, grab it earlier on than where we got it, and we couldn't use the mystery box instead, but, yeah, just no reason yet. Mystery box is just really weird in general. Weird item. To be is dead. That's a, that sucks. I think we need them later on. Yeah. Right, time to go to plop side. Um, if you weren't here, uh, I think over an hour ago. We, uh, we already blew up this wall using Boomer uh, between 2-4 and 3-1. So uh, thankfully, we don't have to do it here. We don't have to switch over to Boomer. do need to use Fleet and uh, Bubbly. There's a wild theory to get this, um, to do a flop site early in uh, after Chapter 3, when we have carry. So we need to switch to Bubbly anyways. And then purchase actually use Meatball Man. <laughs> to get the pipe so we are able to go back and forth between flip side and flop side. But uh, there's no too press efficient method to clip out of bounds um, to make it worth it. I do have one idea, but it's very far fetched. And I, I tried it a little bit, it just didn't seem likely. Because we could clip out of bounds using like a shell shock and using the ceiling method. But without throw, it's very hard to set it up, especially in this area. Hey, we're on flop site now, that's cool. I just noticed we're also missing Tippy from the uh, overlay. Was it removed in Chapter 3 too? I just didn't recognize yes, it. Yes, it was. Nice. Overlay I... just overall looks amazing, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't notice that till now. <laughs> yeah, one of the, the main reasons <laughs> for those who know, this, uh, this took uh, 35 hours to render purely because of the, uh, the amount of tracks I had for editing. <laughs> I thought it was gonna take maybe 24 hours and it took 10 hours longer than I thought it was gonna be. Almost didn't even have this ready in time. Thankfully, we barely managed to get it in time. I did the smart thing and I rendered it in chunks. Yeah. <laughs> or for the human task. I always should have done that, but it's all right. I think it worked better. Uh, using my workflow to just have it all in one file, just in case I mess something up. You imagine I forgot to count a two press. <laughs> have to redo everything. I missed, the, I missed it on the counter. So this is where we start to really miss the return pipe. Because now not only do we have to walk back, but we have to walk all the way back from here to the flip side tower. Without carry. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> probably adds an addition like 20 minutes to the, to the task just from these segments alone. Yay! I love <laughs> walking! Really, uh, really good uh, gameplay. Really exciting. At least one of these gameplay. segments has a little cool uh, movement thing when we're walking back. Most of the time it just looks like this. 
you know, anything to be efficient with the two pets encounter. I mean, we did just spend six minutes fighting Brobot, so. <laughs> Can we submit this as an 80% run? <laughs> 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 I think that would be really funny. I mean, like, it's not breaking any records, so, like, what's the harm? <laughs> it would be really funny. It's like an old idea that Gamer valid. Squiddy had. They, they were gonna put their failed any percent run where they died a bone shell and uploaded as a game over percent run. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, like, there it's, like, it's completely allowed, right? Oh, yeah. It's not breaking any rules. They are game over. <laughs> yeah, I was... I was thinking we should probably add a step counter. That would have been a great addition, for sure. That sounds like torture to count all of that. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're finally getting everywhere. back. So, uh, I will be honest here. This is probably going to be the most slow parts of the test. Uh, five, chapter 5 is really cool, but it's also very long. We'll see why. But for now, let's not worry about it. So we're gonna play this chapter like semi-casually. I mean, we don't have the gold bar, so we're not gonna be doing the block puzzle skip. And uh, I'm not gonna do the old method either of uh, fuddly jumping over, because that takes too many two presses. So we're gonna do the puzzle. And uh, I wonder if anybody remembers the sequence, because I had to look it up. I know someone who does. I think they're in chat right now. <laughs> Sorry, Apple. Oh yeah, I forgot that command is there when I tried to give my scuffed explanation during the robot fight. <laughs> yeah, useful command if you're confused. Let's go. Yeah, middle, right, left, left, right, middle, right, left, right, right, middle, right, right, left, middle, middle, left, 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 right, left, 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 middle, middle. While I was happening, we had to use a two press to, I, I don't know, say yes. No, it's, such a, it's in Japanese. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, I guess speaking of it, I, you might have noticed we are playing on Japanese. Um, there's actually a really very obscure reason why we're doing it. It's not because of a specific glitch. Oh, I know why. Uh, yeah, if you know why, uh, maybe if you don't know, you could guess. It'd be kind of funny. First I don't person, know if anybody. First person they don't to guess know, it. We'll get nothing, but you, you'll, yeah, be you'll, cool. you'll get absolutely nothing. But you'll at least be cool knowing a really obscure thing. I don't know really obscure, but it is pretty obscure. Wait, can you repeat it? Um, why we're playing on Japanese? Because there's a there's a reason specifically for the two button challenge. Mm -hmm. We're playing on Japanese, and it's not just one. It's quite a few. It's it's few. There's also I'll, when we get there, I'll also explain a little bit more like, why it's interesting. I want to say crashing, obviously. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be crazy. If it's like we use crashing to our advantage somehow. John, you're not a speedrunner. Of course, you don't know why. Okay, let's go up here. Okay, I'm gonna have to wait again. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you gotta love it. So this is why uh, chapter five, and this is not the only time I'm gonna use the megabyte. So, uh, uh, you know, if we if you need to go to the bathroom, <laughs> you have to go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. Now's the time. And if you don't need to go yet, don't worry. There'll be more opportunities later in this chapter. Um, yeah, so I guess coming up, I'll talk about 5-2 a little bit because it, there's a lot going on there. But um, 
We need to get the three tablets, obviously, to get Kudge. And then we also need to um, uh, climb up this giant block tower. So there's a lot that needs to be done there. And getting the tablets are not that easy either. So maybe start thinking your head ways to maybe like minimize the jumping there. Because there's some really out there strats there, you just have to wait and see. Um, for now though, we're just gonna have to wait for this megabyte. is now enter, uh, in the middle of entering Chapter 8. Yeah, so um, no longer that <laughs> close, quote-unquote close. Relatively speaking, we're pretty uh, pretty far away <laughs> from Chapter 8. Just these darn megabytes. Oh, we need to name this one. Shoot. We need name suggestions for this megabyte. We had, uh, so far we had uh, Ian, uh, Maggie, and Marty. I think those were the only three you've come across so far. David? Okay. Will be David. Okay. Don't worry, there will be more opportunities to name megabytes. Should be seeing David in uh, 10 seconds. And we also had Joshua earlier. We'll see Joshua's cousin in a few chapters from now. Alright. See, like, it's just too useful not to use. So these, like, ledges are a hundred units, and they're just not able to cross them or climb them with Dudley. It only goes up to 74 units. I'm also going to use, uh, use, uh, David here. Another pause to manipulate, and nice. First block puzzle, only uh, left, right, and lower. Pretty easy to remember. Yeah, I don't know when the last time I've seen somebody actually uh, enter in the, the uh, block combination. But, uh, I try to be a little bit faster for it. it turned out well. Because we do have to use Studley here, so it's a little bit interesting. I'm kind of flipping into the corner. Shout out to Tart. <laughs> kind of just appreciate just how much we save by not doing this. <laughs> left, 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 middle, middle. There we go. Yeah, thank, thank goodness for Fudley there. I don't know how many two presses that would have taken. It would just that would just gold bar clip. There's so many places where it's like if we didn't have Fudley, we would probably actually need to do some gold bar clipping. Twenty-five. I'm sure there would be some workaround. Maybe with like throw, we could like save a few. But yeah, that chapter is really clean. That was a total of two. Fortunately, that one guy asked us a question, so we didn't get the quote unquote perfect of one. Remember, we have to use the two button to save, so can't really get a true one or a zero there. And on to five dash two. Five dash two is another one of my favorites. Lots of it's, interesting techniques in this one. This is one of my favorites, but it's also I think the longest chapter in the entire thing. So it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> can I take a guess why? Yeah, you can take a guess. There's multiple reasons, so 
Is it, is, do you use like five different megabytes to climb up to the dungeon? <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no megabyte that spawns in that room, and it, it's very oh, unfortunate. No. That'd be so cool. But um, yeah, if you saw the trailer, you probably already know what's happening here. We are getting our getting damage, which is kind of strange. I don't think we're gonna be using a life ship here. Some kind of grind. Maybe. All right, time to wait for another one. We do have to wait for one here. Thankfully, one spawns here. Uh, could you imagine this uh, water tablet's below a giant water pool? It's, uh, swimming up here would take me several, maybe tens of two presses. Also, we won't be grinding here. We need low H or uh, low attack. I believe it's eight three. We need to do some enemy jumps. So Not that's sure what exactly. I. That's what I was talking about earlier. We used to need to uh, have a low attack for eight three, but recently I think we could do it with one more attack. But uh, I just didn't crowd it in. I, it ultimately doesn't really save that much time. It would have. It would have saved the most in the robot fight, but I think. At that point, it's not really good. I think there's some place in between now. Oh, it's a it's seven three actually that we need to lower level for eight three. No longer need it. So um, this one, I like the idea of uh, Craggy. It seems fitting for this one. We'll, so we'll name this mega by Craggy. So I have to tart for that name. So yeah, it's just a big bummer that. A mega play doesn't spawn in like the one room where we really need it. I guess this is really good too. Having it in this room. And yeah, we did go down to 8 HP. Which is kind of weird, but it's it's it all makes sense to him. That seems like the theme of this task so far is just kind of observing something and just waiting until it comes into relevancy. You should play capably with the door. Yeah, it's coming in every now and then. There it is. And uh, there it goes. So this is also another one of those areas where we need to spawn it up here because if we go down to the water top, it, it would not spawn when it let it when, when the time moves over. Right, we're almost we're almost ready to go on. to go. So yeah, look how much water that is. We barely get like any ink from any swims, but thankfully there's the Mega Knight. There's Craggy. And, uh, the cool thing about underwater is that we'll be able to completely like air stall, or I guess water stall. Um, well, I actually went by pretty fast, but uh, typically you have to wait a certain amount of frames in order to um, cancel a thudly and then ground pound again, but in water you could do it like immediately. I think you waste one frame. So you could stay in the water at a certain height for a long amount of time. So we're actually gonna do things I think a little bit out of order of what you're used to. I think most runners um go get the uh the fire tablet first, right? Yeah. But then they go get out chunks. Uh, with the Earth Tablet. We're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go get the Earth Tablet first. And uh, we'll, we'll see why in a second. Uh, first we have to deal with Oat Chunks. This time we don't need to do any. We have Club Base. We don't have to do any home buffer bounces like last time. I really wanted to get the thing where like you instantly spawn the Stone Tablet. I don't think that works without carry. It might be. No, you definitely can get it without carry. It's just really? stupid being finicky. Oh, I wish I knew. I, I would love to include that. It doesn't really matter too much, though. Stop jumping. That's okay. Oh. 
Zio chunks fight, pretty pretty standard. Yeah, there is a trick where you can uh, spawn for whatever reason spawn the stone tablet early without having to go around the Yoshi statue. I just didn't do it here; they didn't know you could do it without carry. It doesn't take too long to go around it. Time save for the next one. Daisy, Daisy. Okay. All right, so now now it's time for the reason why we did this first. So there is a uh, a uh, uh, these are not called like just normal turbos. I don't know if they have a specific name. There's one that is this in 3D, and uh, we need we need to move it quite a bit, like the other side of the room. I go really slow, but uh, you know it'll, it'll get there eventually. We just have to wait for a little bit. <laughs> I just trying to understand why this is one of the longest chapter segments. Also need to worry about our HP. We did take a few uh few hits earlier. We can't really take any more. Yeah, the the pink ones just have turbos. That makes sense. I don't know if they would be like called like drowsy turbos or something because they afflict sleep. This strat is like one of those, why didn't we find this sooner, at least in my mind? Because we already do a similar lure for the end of the level, but it's like applying it earlier in the level is also something we yeah, should consider. Yeah, this is one of the ones that were surprised, surprisingly found pretty late. Um, it's just one of those things where you just kind of just don't think about it. Okay, we're almost where we want it to be. Just, uh... Probably like maybe a minute or two more. <laughs> Try to get away there. Sometimes you need to uh, make it fire at you or else it'll go away. Um, you might be thinking, well, that guy exists. The, uh... oh, I'm blanking what their name is. Uh... Clubbers. Clubbers, yeah, yeah. Slop Dots. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Slop Dots. Um, unfortunately, even though that guy exists in 3D, uh, the turbo is useful here is because they oscillate up and down, and we need just a little bit more height, so we need to, um, bounce off of it at the peak when they're going up and down. Now I just go into the uh, club of there. So yeah, that door is just slightly too high up for us to normally do a flood, flood leap. Alright, so um, here's the thing. If you're if you're familiar with the uh, everything I've done so far, you probably don't have never seen this before. If you if you've been up to date with um, because uh, I've done a lot of uh, segment chapter segments before. Uh, on my channel, uh, chapter segment tasses, and uh, I found this during the task. I did not know there was a megabyte here, and I just so happened to encounter it while making the task. So I had to redo 5-2 to include this. It saves one two press, <laughs> and is never I never mentioned it or anything. Uh, so surprise. <laughs> Yeah, usually you have to jump back out of the fire tablet room, but the Megabyte, I'm guessing, skips that. Yeah. Uh, I guess a fun fact is the how I found it. So I was actually thinking about a route using a back Cursia to, like, I don't know, once we get Kudge, we could back Cursia back and then do some, like, uh, pre uh, chapter 6 stuff. But I was like, I forgot if it was in 5-1 or 5-2. And it's in 5-1, that's where the back Cursia is. So it wouldn't work. But as I was looking at it, like typing in like uh, where like five two, I saw a screenshot of this room with a megabyte in it, and I was so dumbfounded. I was like, "There's no megabyte in this room," but there is, and I somehow missed it. So uh, thankfully, uh, 
Uh, or maybe not think that we would think about it. We have to wait another three minutes. <laughs> but uh, I guess we do save one to press that. It's not accounted for when I started this test. It's, that's pretty cool. Does this chapter have the most megabytes that I've ever seen? Mm. Tied with, so this is the only other megabyte for uh, 5 3, so it's tied with 4 2. Uh, two. I think, spoiler alert, I think this is the last megabyte of the run. So we need a, a final name for the megabyte. Um, any suggestions in chat? Our last three minute wait. Dallas Jesus. <laughs> Mega Buy Stanley. These are all good names. I'm fine. I, I, we, need a, we need a really good name. Something that we're like, yes. Johnny. <laughs> I wanna like I wanna like incorporate how this one is like the most elusive, at least for me. Samantha, Stanley, another book for Stanley. I think I think a lot of people are, are liking Stanley. Oh, okay. I had to dodge that Chris here. <laughs> I think we'll settle on Stanley a couple of those votes. Drybridge. Breadword. <laughs> yeah. I might be wrong though. I'm pretty sure this is the last mega fight. Um, there's like um I think there's a few that spawn earlier, but they're not useful for us. And there's also gigabytes, but they only appear in like, I think bonus rooms, so completely out of our way. <laughs> Ride Rich. Sir Nathaniel Stanley Richard for the Conqueror. I think we'll settle on that one, but we, we could shorten it to Stanley. And unfortunately, you know, we had a good time here with uh, the three minute long waits. Uh, and now it is over. And then I realized, oh, she's yeah, going to another one I completely forgot about. <laughs> I can't think of one in Chapter 7, at least. I feel like they just don't even spawn in Chapter 7 that much. Yeah, I think at a certain point they just get replaced by um, Gigabytes. And they only appear in bonus rooms. So yeah, we we do need to be Bowser there. I had the crazy idea of using a fire burst there, it doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, this is where we used to use the uh, the two button, but now we use the mega bite. I thought that was being so clever. I was like, this this would be a crazy Easter egg to, to skip Bowser, but now it doesn't work. Okay, so now we have all the tablets. Now we have to climb up this uh, giant anything they call card block uh, tower. Um, but now <laughs> we do have to learn this turbo again, so... Um, yes, let's go. More waiting. And okay, now you're starting to understand, you have to wait for two megabytes and I also have to wait again for this turbo. I think this is probably the longest chapter. Maybe, maybe 8-4 is faster just by the cutscenes, but... I think this is probably longer. 8-3 is also really long, but we don't have megabytes in that one. Yeah. Thankfully we don't have to wait there. Yeah, we minimize. So if you also didn't notice, the pixels also have that same animation. But we just rarely switch over because it's, you know, too, too aggressive. Thankfully, we don't have to lure this one as far. Uh, still, uh, still have to lure it. <laughs> Should have turned Mario to the side when I flipped. Yeah, because I wanted this to take 40 hours in <laughs> rendering instead of 35. That's why I didn't do the score. Because even though the score is kind of a useful tool, there's no way I'm. Because I have to do all this manually. Maybe if I had some sort of like a Lewis script to output it, maybe. So we're actually going over here, and not only did I manage to save one two press while making the test, but I actually managed to save two. We're actually saving one over the, what I've previously documented here, barely, by going all the way up to that pipe, which is pretty cool. 
So this is actually two, um, two presses saved over when I started the test back in August. Really cool. And the reason why that works is because the pipe is like, I think five units taller than where we used to be able to access without jumping. And that just gives us enough height to make it all the way to the top with one less jump. Alright, time for the big reveal. Uh, a few people mentioned it in the chat, uh, the reason why we're playing on Japanese. It's really strange, but um, in Japanese, Kudge is prompt, because you, you have to input like a phrase to Kudge. In English, and I think most other languages, you have to input eight characters. But in Japanese, you can only you, you put in four and it'll work. Um, and I think Moonrise also mentioned what I was going to mention, but in the Korean version, it's actually completely replaced with a single dialogue option, which you would do, it would make you think that that's probably the optimal version. But you have to remember that the Korean version does not have chocolate or GBS, so it's uh, not optimal, unfortunately. So even though it saves uh, an additional, I think four two presses there, just not having GBS is just overall worse. Now we're at 260. So now, now we can actually lure the clubba, which is a little bit faster than the turbo, thankfully. Okay, we're actually taking a few hits here. Um, not really caring about our 3D meter anymore. It might be only four um, characters because of the way the Japanese language works, where it's like more sounds per symbol that's my guess i don't know oh another home buffer bounce i forgot about this one actually so um, it doesn't make sense why you can't like spam a for the japanese text either because if you put in eight japanese characters it would be like no try again <laughs> so if you notice we didn't switch back to Dudley there after we had kudge we need kudge for a few blocks in 5-3 so it's actually better not to switch over yeah, this um, guy's in peril again. We're in peril. I want to take a guess on what that means. Waiting for our 3D meter to drop. We want one of the cooler things that we need a live stream for. Uh, ah, got it. You have Mega Rush. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's that's five then. So we can hit the uh, star block while going down there. Saves a jump. That's one of the live stream uses. Still two more on the uh, six we got initially. One of the cooler saves. Uh, that's like, that was really cool routing that. 5 dash is also just a really cool chapter. We actually passed like the, the long parts of it, so now it's only just cool from here. 5 dash 2 was just such a <laughs> half a snore fest, half pretty cool strats. We are taking a few jumps here, but overall it's better than switching back and forth from the loop. Now we have Flip Cragly. Cragly Ho. A little quirk with the text there is if you wait for Mario to f stop walking, it actually saves time because uh, otherwise, like if you mash through it normally, it will pause for five seconds randomly. Yeah, it's so weird. There's also, uh, I think, Love B. Uh, it's the same way. I think I think oh, there's like another NPC that I'm forgetting. Yep. It's the same way. I, yeah, I found that it, it's the same thing with Lovely, and I found that it's the same thing with the first Samurai guy. But those are tiny time saves. And the cutscene in 3 1. Oh, yeah, yeah, this. that one too. Yeah. There's probably more of those, but yet to be found. Cool, we're going back to our kind of roots. We're not relying on Thudley here. So we're going to be jumping off of these fuzzy beetles. Well, not really jumping, but landing on them. He's going through here without Dudley's... Um, still doesn't take jumps. We're low on HP again, so that's that's not great. Oh, we actually used Kudge. That's crazy. Defeating uh, the head there allows the flower to walk off the ledge, so... There we go. Oh yeah, this is the block why we needed a Kudge. Otherwise we had to switch back and forth. So the thing about these minecarts is that, um... Uh, they, um... You have to hit... 
the two button once to accept the minecart ride, and another, this is like lesser known, is you have to recover from getting knocked off the minecart. Which is weird because there's a similar, um, when you land from a flipside tower, you get knocked off similarly, but you're able to just automatically get up. Here, you just stay on the ground for as long as ever, and you'll just stay there until you hit the two button. So every minecart ride, it takes two two presses. So if we're able to get across without it, then it will be optimal. Is this layout publicly available? No, this is sitting on my computer. <laughs> and this is all this is uh, all done manually, so it's not any like scripts going on. Um, Soon enough, I'm working on it. Yeah, that'll be really cool seeing it all be updated. Man uh, off <laughs> I said autonomously, but automatically. So we have to take one jump here. Um, but like I said, optimal over the two for the minecart ride. If That's you're another in one. The, uh, SPM server, you can look in tools dev to see how far I've come for that. Sorry. Yeah, it was looking really cool so far. I'm really, really happy, uh, happy with how it's looking so far. So this room is also. Oh no, it's not this room. Sorry, it's the other room. That's another example of walking, like running speed around a wall, being able to stay up there without falling off. Oh, you really can, you can jump around the corner. You just walk along it. Yeah, you just walk along it. Uh, this is another NPC that you have to let go of the two button in order to talk to. You can't have any buttons held when you talk to the guy, otherwise it just won't work. So now we have to... a little bit awkward, now we don't have the two button held to do this jump. So make it up. You can actually see how much the two button helps there. We barely got any height there. It's okay though, we get it back right over here. Yeah, we we have to recross. So we just hold it again. Makes you really appreciate it every time we hold the two buttons for like an entire chapter. <laughs> Has a lot more uses than just the uh, pressing aspect. That's why I mentioned at the start yeah, the, the the technicality of it. Because even though it's like a minimal two button run, we still hold it for like the majority of it. It's just the pressing action that we're uh, caring about. So we're actually like failing quite a bit because I think we've held the two button longer than even any percent <laughs> runners do. Thankfully, we're not caring about the frames held. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like if I was this class guy, my fingers would hurt by now holding it down. Maybe they uh, use tape to hold down the button. That's what I would do. Literal tool assisted. I love that. <laughs> IRL tool assisted. I mean, like, if you want to do an RT run, an RTA run of it, is it tool assisted if you use tape? That's the uh, that's uh, morally. No. Uh, <laughs> if if that was the case, then like ha like ninety nine percent of Galaxy Two runners and Galaxy One runners would be invalid because <laughs> of the so, yeah, crazy I, ways they keep two remotes together. I probably should have mentioned at the start, but yeah, the two button is red on the input display because we're holding it down. So anytime it's red which is basically all the time, it's being held down. Same with any of the other buttons, but I mean, like how the down D-pad is held. So here, we do ride the minecart because we have to do like flips under the, uh, the... I always forget, are they stalactites or stalagmites? The ones that hang from the ceiling. I think. <laughs> These things, these pointy rocks, the lag tights. I never remember the uh, the new name for that. Are mites the one that come from the ground? Then? Uh, yeah, I think that's the uh, the way you remember it. So yeah, we have to jump from the uh, knock back there. Okay, so this room is really cool. It, it kind of just works out in a really clean way. Um, if you remember the. I think it's the Mike Man that's in this room. You have to kind of go up and around to get him. So we uh, we use one of the uh, flower bodies to get down there, or uh, to get across. But it's also important to realize that he's still alive down there. And once again, we had to let go of the two button to talk to this guy. Um, but now we kind of can't hold down the two button. Um, so how are we gonna get past this? Well. 
It's actually a weird thing that if you hold down the one button after using Thudley, it'll still work as a um, a higher jump. But as you see, we can't really cancel the Thudley animation from there. Hit this ladder block, and remember that guy we hit earlier? Um, just a second. Any second now. Alright, there he is. I'm using the getup. Kind of just cool how we used both of these guys twice to get around the room. How nice. Before this, we had to use a different strat where you went, like hit the vine first and then went back out of the room. But now we just do it in one trip. Yeah, we used to have to like hit the the uh, vine or uh, the ladder block, but I just figured we could just probably hover over to make it like that. Worrying about it. And we're still not holding down the two button. There we go. Well, I guess we did. I, I missed it. Because we had to activate the minecart. Okay, so, uh, oh, that's not okay. The mushroom. So we need to get back up to full health here for another poison. We grab the mushroom back to full. And, uh, we get to do poison traps again, which is pretty cool. This, this poison actually goes a long way for us. And thankfully, uh, we are able to use it before it runs out. Didn't do any, like, um, we have to wait for a cycle here, so I couldn't do any, like, uh, uh, cancel, like, the any damage in the air, so we had to take it a little bit slowly. So here's the first reason why we use the poison to make this jump. We take damage right up there, otherwise Thudley just ground pounds right before the, uh, the spiky buzzy beetle. Second reason is there, to cross that gap from the lock. And the third reason is just a time save, we do it there, and then it just runs out perfectly. Uh, all of those reasons, you know, we, we don't go any higher, but the poison allows us to go farther. Which is nice. That was a really cool run. Yeah, this is the uh, minimum two presses run. If someone wants to do estimation point two DC, that's it. Yeah, you can stand on the locks. It's very useful in. Uh, well, it's kind of useful in Pit of Hundred Trials. Yeah, some you sometimes see it there. One thing uh, in this upcoming room is that there's a, a, a Mega Star, and the Mega Stars just do not break. Oh, I guess sorry, I completely forgot about this minecart section. Um, the room after this, Mega Stars don't break clutch blocks, and in fact, we need to break a clutch block to get the Mega Star. But that was an idea we had a while ago. You can so just slide down part. here. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> That's Pretty so fun. funny. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully this area is completely downhill, so no two presses needed. Oh, well, okay, I, I lied, but like, you, you get the idea, we don't need to jump. <laughs> that must hurt, yeah. I imagine what Mario's doing right now. Yeah, we do need to switch back over to Kudge to break the last catch block of the room. Um, and once again, we're not actually switching back to Fudley after this. So we're going to take another jump into the uh, star block. It's just another uh, weird routing thing. But you think it's probably just beneficial to get our jump replacement back, but we're able to maneuver around enough to not need it. Yeah, not too bad, 15 two presses for that. So this is the, uh, for scanner skip, we used, this is the one case where we need to use uh, the uh, gold bar clip initially. But since the discovery of Fleet Ledge cancels, we instead replace it with Fleet. So we don't need to get the gold bar anymore. Now this is the only time we used uh, the Fleet Ledge cancel on the run. Still looks as cool. It's basically just the, uh, the task method. 
I guess like a normal monkey really. Because we don't have that that we do need to use this guy to get across. Makora method. Yeah, every skippable pixel has a failsafe that gives you the pixel at the end of the level. Not all of them. Um, weirdly enough, the only ones we can skip give us yeah. pictures. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> For whatever reason... Yeah, this is where we uh, go out of bounds. There we go. So if you've never seen that before, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Easy. Fast does it so fast, you barely see what's going on. <laughs> so yeah, we just do a... Weirdly enough, the corner in that room, the top corner, you're able to just jump in that corner. Oh, look at that. That's the cool thing. Uh, I think Roblox found that. That will incorporate into this task. Very cool. Uh, one thing at a time. So yeah, three bullets cancel. We're able to do another uh, ceiling version of the item slide. And uh, we're able to go out of bounds. And then because we're out of bounds, we're able to use a ledge to uh, use fleet and access the door without needing the uh, four inch door. Weirdly enough, the uh, weird out of bounds thing the ladder doesn't work for this area. Or the, uh, the white flower. You have to spend a little bit of time hitting these blocks to be the right color. Not really a faster way to do it. <laughs> I mean, we don't need to spend the two presses to do it, so that's good. Yeah, we kind of think we do skip every pixel we could in this run, but we do go back to get slim just so we could save one two press. We, we skip it, but then we don't skip it. <laughs> There's a method, if you, if you guys didn't know. There's a weird gap in the collision with the, uh, the cage in 2-3 that you're just able to just kind of go through. So you don't need slim, but it takes an extra jump than what we do in the task. All right, time for the uh, the boss fight. Honestly, pretty pretty quick. Or how long 5-2 was. <laughs> Still have all five of our, or not, we used one life stream. We have five out of six life streams. Still don't know what we're doing with the block block. The poison stream just isn't really, I mean, we've seen how useful poison is, so who knows when we're gonna use that. Unfortunately, you don't. Can't switch to Bowser here. It's two, two presses, so don't get the extra attacks. This fight's gonna be a little bit longer. Kind of cool, the platforming. Kind of interesting you brought up switching to Bowser because doing it here, if it wasn't for the post chapter, it probably would be more efficient. But... Yeah, we're gonna be actually switching to Bowser like voluntarily soon. Normally we just switch them because we need his fire breath, but soon enough we actually are going to switch to him on the phase 2 of the fight. I almost got hit there. Oh yeah, I actually got hit there. Actually, the double damage. Oh, that means we're gonna have to heal the uh, low health thing again. Oh, that's unfortunate. Right. Not too bad. Couldn't really make that super fast without the attack. Correctly. So yeah, a initially ho in the chat. Yeah, any any craggly hoes in the chat. So yeah, this chapter gone through a lot of different changes. When they initially uh, routed it, there's actually a time where Dottie Skip was like relevant for like a, a little bit. So they originally used Dottie Skip, 
But then uh, the first method of scanner skip was found, but that took a lot. <laughs> so it wasn't really viable for the two button challenge. And then uh, the gold bar clipping was found. And that was uh, very nice. That, was, that saved like a lot of two presses. But then a uh, fleet ledge cancel was found and it just saves one more two press off of the gold bar clip method. So a lot of, uh, a lot of improvements there. I think that we still have like two hours left. <laughs> we're, I think we're coming up to the home stretch, but we're really not that far away. <laughs> yeah, it's not that close. Chapter six one, it's kind of a long one. Yeah, imagine six dash one, no carry. <laughs> yeah. So anytime you skip a oh, pixel, no. Red Penguin um, asks the game forces Dotty there. So yeah, anytime you skip a pixel, um, if the game does reward it to you after the chapter. Uh, it just automatically sets it as your active pixel. So you just get Dotty there for free. Not really useful though. We don't really want Dotty. <laughs> but that's the the last pixel of the run. So, so you're telling me you're not we're not getting Piccolo? <laughs> what about all those Piccolo two press saves? Honestly, Barry had a bit of potential to save some two presses, but um, it's just too far out of the way. You could, uh, it's kind of like a, a worse version of Throw. <laughs> but there's, a, there's a one very specific use case in 8-1, but it's just not worth it. You're able to like infinitely climb with a uh, Mr. I using Barry, which is something I learned very recently, but just doesn't really do much else. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting Dashel. Dude, Dashel would have helped a lot with these uh, walking back and forth segments. <laughs> yeah, it's not really worth spending 50 minutes in the pit. <laughs> Maybe would have uh, broken even, but yeah, just way too many two presses. Deco could help with the under chop? That's true. That's interesting. So yeah, we, so I mentioned earlier, but technically uh, Flopside Early could save a single two press, or maybe two if we find a way to do it without two presses. Um, if we found a way to clip out of bounds, very uh, with a few two presses, because then we could just purchase the uh, meatball pipe. <laughs> I'm going to continue calling it meatball, but um, it just, um, it would only save those four two presses after uh, chapter four to switch back and forth from Fleet and Fugly. It would have been a cool showcase, but it just doesn't work out that way. Piccolo does uh, open up those Piccolo blocks. Actually, probably going to see one coming up next chapter. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think it's in pre chapter seven. Oh, the block? Yeah, the piccolo block. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> if only Nolan had a book on his table. I'm sure he I'd does. Be Dude, that'd be... maybe. But then, uh... We wouldn't be able to go out of bounds. That was the saddest jump I've ever seen. Oh man. Yeah. But it's okay, because... You know, I mean, we could've just switched to Thudley there and skipped that jump, but... We do, we do do that for a reason. Because obviously switching pixels takes too many two presses. All right, we're down to one HP again. I think you probably understand why. <laughs> the, uh, the theme here. So I can't do any thuddy jumps here because if we flip back into a 3D, or I guess 2D, We'll go back to the start of the room. So we have to do the fight and jump there. But wait a second. We're not done yet. We're back to 1 HP. For a, for a very, very weird save. Okay, Mario's taking up the courage to make the jump. 
We're falling there. Now we're activating the second life stream, flipping back into 2D, and we're just barely able to make that jump. And now we switch back to 3D. Um, reason why that saves... Is, think of, if you remember uh, talking about Thudley hovers, where we kind of cancel our uh, gravity from accelerating us too far downwards. That's basically just a single Thudley hover, but in form of a life stream jump. So we're just able to just get slightly more distance there and make that jump in just one. I'm glad you finally implemented taking damage off the squig there. I just like a <laughs> one minute time loss that we just sat there and took 3D damage for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I didn't really care about time. <laughs> but for this, I wanted to at least be like somewhat faster than six hours. That's why I mentioned it's like six hours is my goal. I cleared it by like 17 minutes, which is cool. So now we have Thudley, we're able to clear these gaps. And a really, really interesting save here. Um, this is, I think, called Z-pushing. And we're just able to clip through there. I can try my best to explain it. But um, when you are being pushed by a wall, uh, obviously the game like pushes you out in a certain like coordinate. But if you get pushed by a wall and then flip, you kind of get pushed in two directions at once. And in that push, it doesn't really account for like collision in specific like, areas. Um, not like wall collision, but like object collisions like that stone pillar. So we're just able to like kind of clip through it and not have to worry about jumping over it or around it or using Dottie or using your turnpike or anything like that. Really cool save there. Yeah, we're walking all the way back to Flipside Tower again. Get used to it and do it. Well, actually only one more time after this. this Last time we just go straight to the Flopside Tower. Up on 300. So, um. Who knows? Coming up on chapter six, that's the uh, the Samurai Guy Kingdom uh, chapter. So, I mean, I guess I'll kind of explain it now. Uh, every single fight, we have to climb up. I think, I think it's three steps. It might be two steps. I don't remember exactly. But we have to climb up some steps to go to each fight. So we need Thudley out for that. But there is, I think two or three enemies that have spikes on their heads out of the first 20 we need to fight. And with Dudley and Mario, we just cannot damage them. So that's why we need to switch to Bowser here. It's also just nice to have the extra damage, but we need Dudley to climb up the steps and we need Bowser to deal damage to every enemy here. If there was a way to damage the spike enemies without uh, Bowser, then I'd just save two two presses. <laughs> uh, someone mentioned something funny in the chat. I'm not gonna answer it. I'm just gonna wait it out. <laughs> At least for this part, Mario just automatically gets up here. So I guess we don't really need Thudley until after this. Yeah, might as well just switch to Bowser now. Get the extra damage in. So who's ready for uh, 19 fights with slow Bowser walking in between? <laughs> Me. Alright, 
Fingers crossed, uh, Dolphin doesn't crash here. <laughs> Surely not, right? Oh! Okay, we're good, we're good. That was so annoying to figure out, because when I was playing back this class, it crashed there if I had... Weirdly enough, anti-aliasing on it crashed when all those stamina guys come up. I think it was too much to render or something for my computer or graphics card. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> And here we go. At least we're close to a level up, right? Because we're at 5 HP on the uh, live streams. And it just doesn't help that we need to have only 6 attack at this point, so... Can't really one-hit these guys. About to level up, it's been so long. Yeah, we are gonna level up, but it's just gonna be an HP level up, so fortunately. I was thinking about it, I was like, I was looking at my gore routing, and I was like, yes, we're able to level up in time for the Samurai Kingdom. And then I realized it just didn't even help us. <laughs> there we go, there's the level up. At least that guy died in one hit. Actually, really quickly, gonna pull up, um, see when two, uh, six dash one is over, just so we can have an estimate of how long it's gonna take. Now make it a six dash two at three minutes. Oh, 3 hours, 57 minutes. So, uh, 11 minutes of this. <laughs> At least the, uh, the Samurai guys are different each time. So there's one of the spiky enemies. We have to use the Bowser's Fire there. We got three life shrooms, a block block, and a poison shroom. Keep that in mind. And obviously we have the star shooting star for the under chomp fight. Okay, I guess this is another uh, good time to use a bathroom break. You're gonna miss out on such engaging fights. I assume there's no fight skips going on. Yeah, there's no fight skips. <laughs> um, there might be a way to do it without pressing two in like a in a weird way, but I don't. I don't even think it's really much faster. Reach. Because we'll probably have to involve some weird like, reaching stuff. And even then, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, so in fight 17 and fight 20, you can corner flip through the stage. Before, it was a uh, gold bar flip, but somewhat recently, it was found that you can use carry, walk into the corner, and do a small jump and just clip through the stage. Saves like maybe a minute twenty. And yeah, especially normal eighty percent run. Because the uh, I think fight seventeen is the one with the extra cutscene at the end. So. Yeah, and twenty has the black cutscene. Twenty has yeah, the other cutscene. I mean, we're already halfway there, we're at fight 10 already. Good RNG. Oh wait, it doesn't even matter because you do such slow damage. <laughs> okay, he can either charge at you or... Uh, charge, or wind up his hammer. Yeah, 
Minjo cameo. Those guys can uh, randomly spawn in set, set fights, I think. But you can just kind of either ignore them or kill them if they're in your way. being very nice, offering French toast to chat. I mean, we have the time for it. <laughs> Something I'm noticing, when you go through the door, you enter it ASAP, is that because Bowser's so slow you don't want to do like the door turnaround? Yes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. And also just like Bowser's hitbox is so big so you can start going through the door a lot sooner. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. In a normal any percent run, I think you go through, what is it, two minutes worth of doors if you don't. Well, you can save two minutes by doing a jump and a turn around so that the pixels in your character and Tippy all enter through the center. Just one of those little things that add up over the course of the run. more fights to go. Almost there. Is this fight 17? I honestly have been keeping track. Yeah, there we go. So any, uh, any percent to skip this one. We'll see why it's actually kind of important to skip it. Time as two brothers come out. I think they're brothers. I believe you can technically skip all of these fights, but they're not all worth it, except the two that you skip. I think some of them, the door is uh, not active for whatever yeah. reason. And that tiny guy here. And there he goes. That must hurt, being ground pounded by Bowser. You hear that small? Probably should just, you know, skip the entire cutscene afterwards. Cannot even speed. Alright, two more fights. And then we'll still be moving very slowly, but at least we'll be further along. <laughs> that has a lot of HP. It is Super Paper Mario's birthday. Um, True, two days from now, well, for the uh, at least the English release. American yep. release. It's kind of cool how this. Yeah, it's kind of cool how this test was finished right around the time of like the anniversary. Yeah, that's the main reason why it's done now. I feel like if if I didn't have that incentive, it would have been like done a month or two from now. Really push me to get it out, which is good. 
Yeah, 17 years. Yeah, turn 17, two days. There's Count Black. Okay, now we, we still have to go through these rooms, but no fights. Just as slow as ever. It's gotta be one of the longest segments. Yeah, one long segment that we don't have to wait for a megabyte for. At least the six dash two is a lot shorter. Even though we still have to kind of walk a bit. Yeah, we're less than two hours. At this point, uh, any percent is done. <laughs> and here we are still. Yeah, the any percent world record was done nine minutes ago. Yep. This Samurai guy probably has my favorite design. He yeah. looks pretty cool. Shame we couldn't fight him. There we go. Honestly, like for as long as that chapter is, only three two presses. It's pretty uh pretty solid. What were the two presses? Uh the switch to Bowser. Right. We do it uh, there instead of at the uh, start of the chapter, or I guess the the, the pre-chapter. Just to save a little bit of walking time. And then of course the one at the end to save. Alright, time for the, the Mimi fight. Thankfully, even though we don't have a lot of uh, attack, the fight goes by really quick. I was curious how that fight would be because you don't have enough damage to do the regular strat, but it's that easy. <laughs> that is definitely a way to kill Mimi. I just have to walk for a few more rooms, and then uh, the end of the world has happened. It's not, it's not the end of the world that the end of the world is happening, we'll still be fine. Almost at 300 two presses. Yeah, we've, we've been almost at 300 for uh, quite a bit. It's just that this chapter doesn't really have much and it's quite long. Probably gonna hit four hours before 300 two presses. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. right, is this the, uh, the cutscene? Oh, no, one more. One more. Or maybe two. What or maybe three. It is <laughs> this next room. This next room? This next room. Why does this guy have to stop? Like, imagine if we just went a little bit further. We could probably make it to the next star block. This guy just had to, had to stop us. And laugh at the end of the world. Yeah, technically, this is the first segment that doesn't require any two presses. Um, unless you do pair it with a uh, World of Nothing. 
And like technically, quote unquote, chapter six dash two for what it is, zero. We don't have any save prompt. Oh. If you thought, you know, going through a whole bunch of rooms with Bowser was fun, just you wait for this next segment. Because uh, we have to do it for uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Any guesses on how long this is going to take from here to the pure hard cutscene? Long. Probably quite five minutes, but it's definitely up there. No carry. Of course, we're the slowest character. For reference, I think it takes about a minute 20 to a minute 30 with carry. I mean, it's it's not completely free. We still, we do have one obstacle here. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Oh, good job. Good job. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, spoiler, that's, that's how long it takes. Oh no, spoilers. That's not as long as I thought. Yeah, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, we did kind of break it up into... I had to throw that in there. <laughs> At least you get to hear uh, like different footsteps than Mario's. Yeah, Bowser footsteps, ASMR. I wish they put some like random sleep hints in here. You get like special items if you looked around this room for like ten minutes. That would have been too cool though. I had to make it a uh, fit in like the story. It's really nothing. Uh, another robot fight coming up, but thankfully this one doesn't take nearly as long as the last one. I have to bend six minutes. <laughs> uh, on asks to switch in characters one press. It's actually two, two presses. One to open up the character's menu, and one to actually select the character. Uh, you, so you could either open up the quick menu, which is one plus two, um, to get to the character's menu, or you could just press the plus button and then select the sub menu with two. Either, either way, it's two total. And that's true for pixels, characters, and using items. And we're almost there, we're almost there. Great. It's a rock. It's a stone Luigi. I get that reference. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is a pretty typical, just like damage boost, uh, do some hits. Yeah, I do the same thing in every percent normally. Trying to maximize how to too much damage. There we go. Gamer Squiddy got the reference. Wait, who's Luigi? This is Mr. Ray. Oh, so true. Yeah, we'll see Luigi later. I don't know who that was. Gotta have that joke every time. What joke? Uh, the the stone joke that I made. I was referring to. <laughs> so um, yeah, really, really good chapter. Uh, that was a total of what four two presses. Uh, I I sure hope there's not an incredibly terrible chapter coming up next. That ruins everything. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> Hope your French toast was good. You're gonna need the happiness for this next part. So true. You need literally something to feel any amount of joy. Alright. Yeah, so technically, depending on how you kind of want to break up the, uh, the chapters, we're still really technically on chapter 6. Um, that's how I chose to break it up. Kind of splits every chapter into four segments, so World of Nothing was the third segment. I mean, if we have underwear for the fourth. Yeah, just one to press for the uh, the save prompt. Still, still under 300. That's not gonna last for very long. Yes, even more Bowser walking because we we need just a little bit more of that. The good thing about uh, being Bowser though is that typically when you want to switch to a character, you have to normally switch back to Mario, uh, which takes a total of four two presses, but. Because we're coming up to underwear, it automatically switches us to Mario, so this whole Bowser thing only took two in total. Dementios here now. Empty character. It's unfortunate way to lose the run. Can't really avoid that. Maybe if we had better RNG or something. Well, I mean, I guess that's it. Maybe we should submit this to a game over percent. Alright, so. Kind of the reason, uh, one of the two reasons why this chapter sucks so much is that now we don't have any pixels. So we're back to just being with Mario. And as you can imagine, that's uh, not great because we've relied so heavily on Thugly. We don't even have anything now. But we do have our items. So at least we have those. But no pixels, don't have uh, Peach or Bowser anymore. Just us and uh, our flippability, really. Another use of being able to walk around spikes like that. Uh, we're able to damage boost over these gaps using the uh, potaboos. They're called embers, really. Taking a few extra hits. Um, wow, down to 1 HP. Uh, typical. I uh, really wonder what that's all about. I have to spend one jump there. That gap was just too large to cross with the ember. Uh, so I mentioned this earlier, but this guy, big savior, he allows us to uh, ride across the river for only one two press. I mean, I know it's four coins, but it's really just one two press, and that's never, way better than trying to go across. The river. I never would have I, imagined you use this guy. <laughs> it takes a lot of two presses to do it. <laughs> Probably like twenty each way. Mm -hmm. If we had carry, then maybe maybe we could have done something there, but we don't have anything. <laughs> So yeah, those were cutscenes. Uh, you can look at the input display. Didn't jump there. Cutscenes. <laughs> um, there was another cool idea here to be doing a corner clip to skip these two jumps, or at least skip one of them, but there's actually no real ground under here. Maybe it was just to like, kind of go under and then activate this cutscene somehow. Uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, also, um, Queen Jays is another NPC where, in order to talk to them, you have to not hold any buttons. That's okay, because every time we talk to her, she gives us the great luxury of having to push the two buttons for some reason. Now, at this time, it's like, will you find Love B? Whoever that is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, we're at 300! So that was the 300 press was to say yes to Queen Jays. Well, honestly, not too bad so far. I have five. Mm. 
now we're coming down to uh, the uh, infamous, I guess, more known for water switch skip. Um, we're not going to be uh, skipping the water switch. Well, we're going to be skipping a few uses, but we are going to use one. Oh my gosh, switch. that 3D meter was so close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's actually timed that way. So there's one swim there. And so we're going to activate this one. And obviously swimming is bad for us because it takes a lot of two pressers. But we're just going to empty all the water. Um, and thankfully we have these items to help us navigate this area. Can't really see what's going on there, but just imagine jumping a few times. We're going to break that block in 2D. That's important later. And we'll use one of our life shrooms to get over here. And, uh, I mean, that's really it for the first time through this room. Not too bad, honestly. There's a really precise jump in this room coming up that was very strange. Oh, yeah. This, this, this room is interesting. So we're gonna take our time here. For one reason. So we're gonna have to drop our... As you can see, we have two more life shrooms. We're gonna use both of them in this chapter. We're gonna drop our HP. Um... We could have taken damage on like the underhands, or actually I don't think they spawn, but regardless, we need to wait here anyways, or these fountains. Now you might think that these fountains will just go up and down a, a fixed height, but they actually kind of randomly go up and down to different values. So we're going to kind of wait here until these uh, fountains just lower at the right time you know, to save a few jumps. I'm going to grab this chest, no, just kidding. And grab that chest. I don't, even know, I don't even know what's in there. Maybe a card or something. Dry bones card, I think. Dry bones card. Right, so now we're back down to 1 HP. Just gonna wait a little bit. So we're, we're aiming to get onto that right fountain. Uh, if it goes down low enough, we'll just be able to jump straight up there. Right. We're almost ready. Maybe just one more cycle. Not really cooperating. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. A little bit lower? Okay, great. So now we're up here. And now we'll do quite the opposite. Now we want it to go as high as possible. And there's a very specific, uh, I guess, slide to make it over to where Luigi is. So if we get a very high fountain and slide off the fountain, because we could slide off these like kind of sloped edges of the fountain, We'll just be a barely able to like kind of bounce up to where the UG is. We just have to kind of wait for the fountain. <laughs> Every time I get to this part, I think the last time I tasked this for the segment task, I, I thought I got the max height. But this time I think I got like one more unit farther. So the question really is, is like, can, how high does it really go? Because I have no idea. Maybe, maybe in, a, in an alternate universe in the future. We could like manipulate the fountain, go all the way down to the floor, and would not even have to jump here. <laughs> but uh, it just doesn't seem likely. Okay, we're almost there. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. Nice little slide there. I think we're. I think that time I was two units away from not making it. Last time I tossed it was one unit. So now we have Luigi, and Luigi has a great ability for us. Um, he basically just gives us a free jump, and unlike Buddy, there's like really no downside. He just gives us a huge jump, and all we have to do is press down. And you might think that this kind of just breaks the challenge. In a way it does, but the game still relies heavily on Mario, so we're trying to minimize the amount of times we even need Luigi anyways. But it's great there, obviously. Like for example here, we need to be in 3D, so we'll switch over to Mario. And we're going to use another one of our life streams here to avoid switching back to Luigi. And for me to go down a little bit more. So that's another life stream. We have one left. Still have the poison stream, still have the block block. Um, we broke that block in 2D earlier to allow Luigi to get through this section. So yeah, you see that quick block is broken in. Allows us to save a character swap. Or I guess save another life stream, really. 
switch to Luigi a little bit earlier. Alright, so, so far, you know, kind of annoying we don't have any pixels. Now it's time to swim back up, and uh, we could try our best to minimize our swims. We could use Luigi's super jump and then cancel his jump with a poison to swim up. And uh, we'll use it one more time here, but aside from that, really nothing we could do. And time to just watch the count go up, and up, and up, and up, and up. So a uh, fun fact, well, I guess not so fun fact, this single room has as many two presses as the entirety of chapter four. That is oh gosh. a very yeah. fun and sad fact. <laughs> so yeah, 33 to get through that thing. Not great. <laughs> That's definitely the most dense two presses for the whole run. Like, so yeah, this is succession. obviously the most two press heavy chapter segment. At least it's only, uh, I guess, only down from here. That That's mini good. jump was really cool. I'm trying to optimize because it takes a little bit to charge up with jump. And we'll really use the super jump if we need it. Yeah, there's. That's like the biggest thing that I really want to see saved is that room in particular, but there's just so much going against us there. Um, our best bet is to have some sort of, um, you know, walk underwater glitch or something. And even then, like, what are you even supposed to do? You can't, you know, fuddly to do fuddly jumps. Um, the only real hope maybe is to, like, maybe there's a similar plane like there is in GBS that we could access. And it's just a pipe dream, really. But maybe, maybe we could shave off a few swims there somehow, but that's the best uh, we come up with. We used to take a few le a few more two presses before we came up with the uh, poison shroom shot thing, which I think saved um, maybe like two or three two presses in total. But yeah. Three hundred fifty. Three hundred fifty. No, not. That was so that was my guess. Not to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Really well. Still have uh, two chapters left, but at least now, you know, we had to go through that section. But at least now we have Luigi, right? So that's good. We have, or we have something going for us. You can Can't switch over to Mario here to save some time. Yeah, going yeah. the long, long way. <laughs> we'll switch to Mario eventually, but you know, it's, it's kind of like an oversight where you can just flip and use the pipe like the first time and then flip again and drop down. Yeah. And yeah like chapter 6 was just going so well. Only 3 up to this chapter, this segment. We've had to increase it by so much. If you technically count the few other times we go back here, uh, we had to uh, go into that room for the first time for the river crossing, and then again to swim the thing, and now we're back here again, and we're going to be back here one more time. If you count all those two presses as well, then we're way above <laughs> uh, what the entirety of Chapter 4 was. May even be closer to, uh... Let me check. Closer to Chapter 1, actually. But I didn't check one cells a few extra. Yeah. But yeah. Imagine imagine if this guy wasn't here. Kind of the MVP of this run, really. He's a river man. Does he even have a name? He probably does. I just don't know. He does, but I don't remember what it is. A lot of forgettable characters in this game. <laughs> yeah, total of 57. One more to uh, to leave to say yes to JD because so she always likes asking us questions. It's Gerald. Click on Gerald. Hey, that's the wrong color. Pick your heart. Whatever. Okay, so that was that was rough. Not even gonna sugarcoat it, but 
We're, we're moving on, that's the important part. We have all, all of our pixels back. Hooray. His name is Cherald. <laughs> Cherald. Yeah. Cherald. Seems like something we would name the Megalite. Alright. Time for uh, one final... Okay, well, now we're switching over to Mario. Because now we don't need his jumps to... We can uh, use that thing. <laughs> actually, clever where the name comes from. Is named after Charon, the boatsman of the river Styx in the underworld as told by Greek mythology. Interesting. The more you know. Okay. In case you were not really paying attention, uh, we use all of our life shrooms, and the poison shroom was used for the, uh, the swim backup. Now we're just left with the uh, the shooting star for the under chump and. This still, we have this block block from uh, 4-4, all the way back then. So, uh, but I'm still wondering what we're going to use that for. Oh yeah, keeping us on the edge of our seats. Pipe is not going to take another jump. We'll actually switch to Bubby this time. This pipe and the one in flip side took too many two presses. Just never really worked out for us. <laughs> Until now. Remaining. If you've been here the whole time, you might as well <laughs> see it to the end. Yeah. So this, uh, we're gonna be using Dudley jumps here. Um, it's actually kind of close whether we should switch to Luigi and then return Pipe back, or to switch to Mario and then use Dudley jumps to go both across and back. Uh, ultimately, doing this saves a total of one two press. Which is kind of unfortunate because now we actually have to walk all the way back again. <laughs> if only, uh, if only we didn't need to like flip. Maybe Meatball Man could have been useful, but we do need to please flip, uh, flip to 3D at least once to get back to the main area of flop side. No, it's not a spoiler. I mentioned at the beginning. The, the final time is like 5 hours, 43 minutes, 51 seconds. Yeah, just just under hour 20 left. Yeah, the spoiler is the, uh, the total 2 press count, which we're still, still racking up. Thankfully, this is the last time we'll have to go from flop side to flip side. And honestly, they have kind of a nice break <laughs> from Mario, I guess.
For as two press heavy as underwear was, at least 7-1 is just one more trek through from start to end. And this time we have pixels, so at least it gives us kind of like a get out of a chapter three card. This chapter seven is a little bit less long. And still on low health from the, uh, the live streams. Almost back. We can be freeze a return fight. Now on to chapter seven. So actually, from this point to. Uh, Actually, like all the way through chapter seven, we don't really need to take any damage at all. So really, going to the fountain is really just a time loss. <laughs> oh. But because I was so nice, I decided to spare your ears and do it anyways. <laughs> see it how Thudley just kind of breaks this part. Even with uh, all of our pixels, we still are going to do one last ride over the river. Um, just, even though maybe like Carrie might be able to save a lot of two presses, it's just switching pixels and all that. Coming up on 360. Kind of, kind of an Xbox reference there. Wonder what other numbers we're gonna hit before the end. I have a feeling we will see 420. We're getting close to the end, and I, I sure hope we don't have another uh, 33 two presses in a single room. But who knows? Oh, that's, that's a rhetorical question. Of course, I know. But <laughs> of course, as usual, every time we talk to Jade, she just has to ask us a question that costs us a two press. Do one more here. So this is going to be 360. Too bad uh, John's uh, April Fool's thing isn't real. Otherwise, that would have saved a lot of two presses. <laughs> If, you're not, if you don't know what I'm referring to, check out John's April Fool's uh, secret ending to Chapter 7. Pretty funny. Alright, on to 7 2. And this is where we really get to see uh, Luigi in action, because it's another vertical level. But now we have just basically free jumps.
I was actually wondering if it actually would be uh, more optimal to do this with Mario, but it's not even close. Like, all these jumps are just way too uh, spread out apart. It really is, is asking for Luigi. <laughs> I really don't need Mario for anything. There's no flipping in Seven Two. Yeah, there's actually no slip uh, flipping at all until uh, midway through Seven Three. So we're actually gonna stick with Luigi for a long time. I have a breath of uh, breath of fresh air. We activate um, door guy from below there using I, just from below. I haven't seen that in years. I forgot that's a thing. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, can't really. Every now and then we have these just like long uh, cutscenes that to eat up a bunch of two presses. These door guys, um, very similar to like the uh, Mimi quiz or Merly quiz in Chapter Two. Just kind of just eat up out your uh, your two presses. Same with these guys. Uh, it is a lot is going against us in this chapter, but none of this really having to do with platforming. Yeah, even with Dudley, most of these jumps are actually like 125 units apart, or Dudley only goes 75. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a very fast melting of Bowser, because we only still have three attack. But it's still quite a funny fight. I don't even know why Bowser even wants to attack us. I don't know the lore. He thinks that we're intentionally not telling him I think. Yeah, he has a lot of HP. <laughs> we're taking him all the way to the other side of the room. Using the small jumps there saves a lot of time because you can get attacks off quicker. This is the only, I'm pretty sure the only character, like, party we join that doesn't actually switch us over to Bowser. So we don't have to worry about switching back to Luigi here. Another, uh, another key, another two press. I actually haven't seen a lot of keys as of late. Last time was for the river twigs. I think before then, I don't even know. From Crabby or something. So yeah, this is like just a prime example of why Luigi just works. All these jumps are just... I think these are 100 units apart. So but it just doesn't make it. So this door guy is even worse than the last one. He's actually going to ask us five questions, and each time there's going to be a, a little cutscene, I guess, with these shapes going around. I don't know what these questions are, I just copied what, yeah, <laughs> what everyone else does. Sure, three, I guess. It's three, two, one, one, one. This one uh, may have something to do with the, uh, the, the yellow. <laughs> Still be asked in chat, um, skipping Peach or not skipping Peach. It takes like 22 presses to do Peach Skip, and we could just move through 7 3 with Luigi, so we won't actually end up doing Peach Skip. I was actually going to see 7 3 as kind of intended. <laughs> Probably been a long, long time since that's been done in a speedrun setting. Look at speedrun. But yeah, I, it really only saves, like, if we had a perfect, um, like, speech skip that didn't require any two presses at all, it would save, I think, three two presses in total. Uh, technically five because we need to switch characters. I think ten, actually it's seven, but that's very unlikely to make it work. And then we won't have Peach for later, which we actually do use Peach later. Okay, now we have to go back up here again. At least 
It's not even after two presses. It's just wasting our time. I don't know why this is even like a part of the game. It just seems like needless backtracking. They're like, we've made this really cool darkness effect. We gotta have at least a little bit longer than just this one area. <laughs> so let's just make it again. And you have to do it for a third time in 8-3. Yeah, they, they really wanted to get the most out of that darkness effect. <laughs> Being intentionally inconvenient. It's almost like it's an RPG. At least it's kind of quick going up here. Still not as bad as TTYP Chapter 4 backtracking. Oh yeah. So yeah, we're, we're already back up. At least it's not like walking with Bowser in nothingness for like 3 minutes. At least we're able to look at something. Lovey just sits here waiting for us because she's lazy. She can even fly. She just doesn't come with us. But she could teleport us, but... But I guess she can't teleport it herself. It's a little bit odd. So yeah, so far, um, we're, we are already at 15 two presses for this part. Um, I'm pretty sure like almost every single one of them are just for menuing, which is really sad because um, yeah, literally every single two press in 7F2 is menuing, so there's not really much room for improvement unless we find like some sort of sequence break. So we're stuck at however many it is. I think overall in the run, we're way heavy in um, menuing two presses versus gameplay already. Um, just lots of work on gameplay sections, but not anything you can do about menuing. Yeah, I could break down the uh, gameplay versus menuing at the end. Um, I do want to mention that technically, like, we could bring, if we only focused on gameplay two presses, this run would look entirely different. Which would probably be a cool showcase if it wasn't for the fact that, like, you would need to grind for coins for, like, an item just to get past one thing and then grind for coins again. It would be even longer than this. So we just used the shooting star there. Um, so that takes two two presses and I think... Ultimately, that's the fastest you could, or I, I guess the fastest and the least amount of two presses to get through the fight. You could, I think, certain attacks, like the normal attacks, take one two press, but I think all of them are only single targets. You wouldn't be able to defeat all of them. So yeah, 18 two presses there, and literally no real room for improvement. Just kind of just how the way it is sometimes. Yeah, 7-3 is interesting. There's a really cool strat here that uh, unfortunately doesn't save time in any percent, but it's it works here. So we'll, we'll get there soon. Huh? This is another example of just like how overpowered the Luigi is. Maybe we thought Dudley kind of broke the challenge. Luigi's is on a whole nother level. So yeah, the two button there also allows us to uh, go very high on those clouds. And that's another reason to hold the two button down. So yeah, this is where we would leveled up. We didn't take any damage. But saving your ears between the fountain at 7 one Yeah, we have no real use for coins anymore. We spent all of our coins that we needed on the uh, river ride, so any coins we get from here on out, we just melt and record in, I guess. So, uh, I think it's in this room? Yeah, so this room is why we need low attack to cross this gap. We need to get enough bounces off this guy. That was awesome. <laughs> So now we could level up as much as we want. I think from this point forward, we don't need to do several bounces. Like I said, um, we used to need to bounce off several enemies in 8-3, but I think now uh, we can get across with only one bounce. So no matter what attack we have, we could... time to Time to get the apples. As, uh, as 
I, did Miyamoto work on this one? As whoever worked on this game intended, Nintendo. <laughs> Another good thing is that, uh, thankfully, to get the apples, we need to use Thudley, but I mean, we already have Thudley out. That's the main reason why um, it's better to be all the way back in pre-chapter 7 to be Mario and Thudley. Because we need to be Thudley here anyways to get the apples. I think Kudge also works, but we're, you know, Thudley just play better. I can't believe you can toss. bonk. Sorry, you, go. you can bonk on nothing, like, <laughs> in that room. Yeah, sometimes they're just ceilings when they really shouldn't be. And other times there are no ceilings where we should actually need a ceiling. It's a little bit inconsistent. You see an interesting example in A3 of that. Yeah. I was saying before, this task taught me that you don't have to use Kudge, you can use Thundley. I figured you were going to have to switch, but it's very convenient. So yeah, we do need to be Mario here for, uh, I think this is the, uh, yeah, the Black Apple. So. If we were to find a way to do Peach Skip, we wouldn't need to switch to Mario here, so I guess it's a few extra two pluses saved using Peach Skip. But yeah, it's just not <laughs> feasible in a low amount of two presses to do it. Here's Peach. Um, not awkward. I don't want to skip her, but we're going to get her. So I'm kind of making up for all the times we left her behind. I think it's only fair. Three Peach is given the correct apple. I actually forgot which apple was supposed to be the one we were giving her. And, uh, I, was, <laughs> I, I had to get through it and say, oh, well, Peach is big now, so that is, that is not the right one. Good job. Good job, Taz. Did it. Technically, this is Peach Skip Skip. Um, and like I mentioned, Peach does actually uh, save a few two presses later on. Normally, in any percent, you don't really need Peach. You could do uh, Thudley jumps to get across anything Peach could cross. But here, uh, you know, doing Thudley jumps takes a few two presses, so Peach is a little bit more optimal. But not here. No, we, we still want to be Luigi. Just have to wait a little bit. All right, here's the here's the really cool thing. Uh, I believe it was Zach Link who found this weird uh, floating thing with uh, either springs or these clouds. And yeah, so now we're just gonna float here. Um, you may think we're going up infinitely, but we're actually only going as high as the, the cloud normally would allow us. But it allows us to. Uh, go horizontally there, so we would skip needing to use Peach there entirely to cross the gap because we just float on over. <laughs> oh wow, that skips like that whole poison tree section. Yeah, so we used to, before that, uh, Zach would found that strat, um, we used to, instead of switching to Peach, we would use another poison shroom to cancel a Luigi super jump and then suddenly hover over uh, across the gap, which was a cool strat, but. It was actually kind of a pain working with that. We need we would need another poison shroom. Um, at the time, we had not a lot of inventory space left. Now that that's all avoided using the, uh, I guess we call it a cloud float. Oh, and no, yeah, uh, I, I tried to time it. To, I tried to time it to um, be faster for any percent. It's just barely slower, which is quite sad. 
But at least we get to see it here. We should have put these spots in every level to be seen would be amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just even though it might be like out of place in like, uh, like chapter 5, just having one of those in the, uh, the Kudge room would be crazy. Okay, so we are going to pick up a life stream here. So we're still going to need a few more life streams to open. It's just that these are, uh, you know, when we were getting them in 4 2, we were kind of running low on inventory space, so now that, now that we have a lot of free space, we can get a few more life streams just out in the wild. I actually got baited thinking you, you were about to go for Pete's skip. So <laughs> yeah. That's where you started. Okay, really weird fact there. I don't know why, but when I was tasking this, this, this didn't happen to me in like the uh, previous uh, segment tasks I did for this level. But when I tried to just go straight onto Cyrus there, uh, it just would not let me get a big boost. Even though I was holding the two button, even though I was doing everything right, I had to land on it, then go off the cloud, and then go back on it, and then it allowed me to do a super jump. I don't know if that's something that I just completely forgot about, or maybe it's like Japanese exclusive. I have no idea honestly but that was a weird quirk that was not ready for <laughs> i thought it's i missed something to mention when you get off of cyrus he slams you down in the same way as the minecarts in 5-3 so you need to use a two press to recover yeah it's just so inconsistent sometimes it just allows you to automatically get up sometimes it just doesn't one of those cases where we had to manually get up around right, the 7-4 and we didn't do peach skip but at least we're going to be doing a rainbow bridge skip if you don't know what that is, basically, normally in this level, we're supposed to grab like these three orbs, create a rainbow bridge over to the bone shell fight. Uh, and we just kind of just entirely skip it using deadly jumps. And in this case, it actually is uh, beneficial because a lot of menuing goes into selecting the orbs and all that stuff. And of course, getting the orbs as well. So at least we get to see it. Cool. Like, you need to switch to Mario for some of them. Yeah, but, but a lot of two presses. You have to switch the Bowser to like unfreeze some guys. It's just a whole lot, and it's also just way slower. You have to at least see a a, a familiar skip. Got another key here, so another two press. So part one, before we even get to the uh, area, we have to get up here. We'll switch to Mario now, because we need to do a few more double jumps. You're going to actually almost barely make it up to this platform using a Luigi Super Jump. But it's just not possible. Um, which is a big bummer, because we saved quite a few two presses. But, I mean, we need to be Mario anyways here, so not the, uh, not the worst. So yeah, this is where you would normally put in the orbs to activate the Rainbow Bridge, but instead we're going to, uh, we're gonna do some Feathly Jumps, some good old-fashioned Feathly Jumps. Um, we're gonna do a total of four two presses, and then we're just gonna Feathly hover all the way down. So I mentioned earlier that every time you cancel and re-ground pound, you're at gravity acceleration reset, so you're able to make a few, make it a little bit further on your jumps. And it saves one over what I think normally people do five jumps. Uh, no, it's still four. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it's uh, four jumps and then you do one at the start, right? To initiate it four. That is correct. Jumps. You are right about that. Yeah, so the, the way we did it here is that we started with a... Four thudly like jumps plus an extra jump to get the distance. Yeah. I was going to say, was like, there's no way because that was like within a unit of working. <laughs> That would have been crazy with R2 to do it like that. But yeah, so that was four probably jumps, but it started with a, what we call it a one jump. The bit rate destroyer. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm... So when I'm uploading this to YouTube, uh, YouTube, I'm having a better quality render. I just had to render at a lower bitrate so we could get this out on time. <laughs> so if you're, if you're watching this without commentary, 
Well, you wouldn't hear me right now, but if you would watch it, it would be better quality. Hopefully. Yeah, I think we climbed the stairs with just Dudley. And uh, now we're on the Bone Chill fight. And it's pretty cool because normally we, we just switch over to Bowser and we just insta kill him. But obviously, we're not going to switch to Bowser here. We're still going to kind of insta kill him. Honestly, really cool seeing this be done with Mario because it's a lot less free. Normally, Bowser just rack up hits, but now you have to kind of position Mario in the right place. We'll see you in just a second. Here we go. Almost there, and... Clean. I like the back and forth movement with Mario. I think it looks a bit more satisfying. Yeah, when you when you bounce off of a bone chill, it, it wants to fling Mario like off of bone chill. But if you're able to like uh, land on him and then bounce off his back and then left, you can just chain hits like that. And yeah, I mean we're 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 doing okay. We're we're almost at 400 right now. 402 presses, and we have one chapter left. So. Maybe maybe we will we will be able to do this in under five hundred. Who knows what uh, chapter it's gonna throw at us though. Checking in on the prediction, it's nine to ninety one. Most people are guessing it's gonna be under five hundred. Yeah, smart choice, I would say, but kinda biased, not gonna lie. I mean, this is where we actually reveal that it's like 624. We actually only saved one since 2018. <laughs> actually, it's coming up to five hours here. Um, so we're, we're, we're almost done. We're almost done. We had our bathroom breaks. We had our megabyte breaks. Time to finish it out. Four real levels left. Okay, there goes Love B. Really should have done that like a few levels ago, but you know, we'll take what we can get. Joystick piece, moon rings. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course, one more to press to save the game. Or I guess not to save the game. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it was such a such a weird thing, because I know in a TTYD, you could just hit the B button to say no to a prompt. In this game, you don't have that luxury with the one button. You have to, even if you're saying no, you scroll down and push the two button. You have to say yes to say no. <laughs> Basically. Although there is a few instances, like um, whenever you're asked to like give an item or something, you could push one, but then that doesn't accomplish anything. Time for uh, one final walk to Flopside. And um, spoiler alert: we're not gonna do the really cool uh, this, this cutscene skip at the Flopside Tower. But at least we get to see the cutscene, right? I mean, that's that's why we're here for the story. Yeah, exactly. This is the other um, segment with zero two presses. We won't be going for the FLC or the cutscene skip. They would cost two presses. So I think it's cool to have a zero segment, though, right? Yeah. So technically, like the only real true um, zero segment thing, because I know some runners group together success two and world of nothing. So that's really technically one in total. Yeah, we might be able to see 420, so I wonder where, if we're going to see it when. Of 
Question is 402 presses first or five hours first? Or maybe we'll just never push two again. Uh, I said five hours on the timer. Or by what we would hit first, five, five, five hours or 402 presses. I think it's five hours. I'm not forgetting stuff. I just need to remember how long the, uh, the cutscene is. <laughs> We'll be in chapter 8 for 4 or 5 hours. I don't know, this, uh, this, this task guy is actually kind of going slow. I think he should be uh, using carry or something. Oh yeah, no uh, FLC here either. I mean, we would have to get onto the pillars anyway, so... I think that was gonna happen. Final, final pure heart. Ready to go to chapter 8. Chapter 8's uh, very interesting, honestly. Has one of the, the coolest strats for being so late into the run. Uh, but also has some of the most annoying two presses, in my opinion. LCs means no meep on flips here. We gotta waste time. I also saw a meatball man in the background. Wait, goodbye. Never bought his fight. <laughs> he was not fed. Unfortunately. Thankfully, if we ever do uh, a minimum fleep, uh, fleep, <laughs> I said fleep, minimum uh, flip challenge, we would definitely feed that guy. No reason not to. <laughs> Minimum one press challenge. Honestly, like, uh, it, like skipping like pixels and stuff is also pretty interesting. I don't know if that's interesting as minimum clips though. That's really cool. That's like one of the one things I I want to do after this. All right, on to, on to chapter eight. Just the final stretch, final four levels. Still have that block block from chapter four. Yeah, we, we're still holding on to that block block from 4-4. Four -4. four. Block really, block's gonna have a friend soon, actually. Not the life test of time. And we also picked up that life stream in 7-3. Uh, really weird use of Mario there. So it just seems a little bit unnecessary to use Mario there. You wanna right. show off and put doors on center, so they wanted you to see that one. <laughs> They yeah, wanted just a big dramatic walk up to the castle. Yeah. Just to see about all its glory. Uh so oh, oh wait, I got this Oh yeah, I actually might be close. Well there's we'll see four hundred or five hours. Yeah. Chapter eight's like half like these weird long rooms of enemies, and then the others are just like really cryptic puzzles. Or at least cryptic when I was a kid. Oh. Alright, the answer was uh, oh, no. 400 so or 5 dollars. Uh, very, very close actually. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. We're actually going to see a 402 before 5 dollars. So this is where we need to use Peach. Um, and because, you know, uh, switching characters takes a few. We're actually going to see Peach for a little bit. 
Which is nice, we didn't really see much of Peach earlier in the run. Peach has her uh, parasol that we could uh, use when we hold down the two button. So that's, that's a big bonus. Yeah, 40, 43 minutes left, which is actually quite a bit of time uh, left in the run. So there's definitely a lot of time to still do a bunch of crazy stuff in Chapter 8. Most of it is cutscenes, though. A little, a little shush about that. Probably could have just looked over the button there. I just didn't think about that. <laughs> Save a little bit of time. In the first one. Right, this room is really cool. I mean, normally we could just switch to Mario and go around everything. The, the boring route. We don't want to switch to Mario yet. Actually, it's Joshua's cousin. From, uh, from like four hours ago. Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy John. So, um, a bit of a predicament here, but we could just, uh, parasol. Get through there. Alright, another room of just enemies. Um, really like using stairs, but I mean, we have fun being this one. We do have that live stream. We're taking quite a few hits, so we probably could put two and two together. I think this is the uh, the O Chunks room. If I'm not mistaken. Oh no. Sorry, the next one. I forgot about the uh, the entire reason why this chapter sucks. So we need to switch the Bowser to do the fire puzzle. But then we have this giant staircase. Yeah, huge stairs. I think each of these are actually like max height jumps, like 125 units. So we switch to Luigi because Luigi can't clear these. Well, we're actually like red from chat whenever there's anything that's vertical. <laughs> you can just cry. Yeah. Uh, at least this was not too bad. You actually get to see like every character. Okay, guys, uh, avert your eyes for a second. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's it's gone. You can you can look at you can look at him. Okay, now we're at the edge. Right? Yeah, Yeah, that's nice. Uh, the game's gonna force us to use Bowser, which is great because more attack. This is kind of a little bit faster. Crazy damage with uh, double double attacks. Like, pretty good work. Oh, that was a fast fight. I like it. I feel like I've seen a meme of someone editing that towards to actually be correctly placed. Yeah, yeah, I forgot who did that. I saw that too. I need to see all that. I need to see that picture again. I think it's pinned in general. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, John uh, made that image. So, say goodbye to Bowser. It was a uh, very nice seeing him walk you know, like 15 minutes earlier. But now it's time to say goodbye. Uh, we'll be missed, maybe. Uh, no, we'll give him credit. He, he helped us out. A few of the fights made a few fights faster. 
Alright. We are coming up on 420. This will be at 410. Yeah, the, uh, the underwear segment really throws off a lot of people. You don't really think about it until it's too late. It's uh, 33, just wondering, this is terrible. Classic, just room filled with enemies. Kind of feels like a Mario Maker level. Little Tim just put in a million enemies. Left in a dev path for us though, at least. Walk past everything. Uh, so yeah, Merlin's here. We don't really care about what he has to say. We'll do the uh... The classic. Skip all of that. I'm gonna grab another life stream, so we're we'll actually gonna be using two for, for the rest of the run. Okay. Well, that's definitely Merlin. I mean, we may as well just be Merlin. We never really get to see if it wasn't. So this is the uh, the mushroom room, I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah, plot twist, we're actually not using a life stream yet. We're going to heal up a little bit. At least we don't have to hear the uh, beeping for a little bit. That's one of the areas where we don't need to push to to get back up. So yeah, very inconsistent. Seems like anytime we like fall, well, that's not entirely true. We do fall in the, uh, the Cyrus cutscene. Another key, another press. Alright, so surely, surely this is actual Merlin, right? If the last guy was actual Merlin. I just wish they'd stop asking us so many questions. Mm, yeah. We'll, we'll see this is a common theme where these, these guys just just quite yappers, really. They're just gonna let us go through without uh, pressing two a few more times. I was actually really... Yeah, I was really tempted to do Francis, but uh, it wouldn't really cost us any more two presses, I'm pretty sure, but... Uh, you have to defeat him before it'll let you leave, right? So you would still fight yeah. Francis again. But, uh... This this is pretty. It's longer. It's already pretty long. So let's just try to wrap it up. <laughs> if you did choose Francis, you can actually go bar clip out and I think FLC, and you can just get out without having to defeat him. That's really cool. I didn't know about that. But like, to be fair, like he's he's lucky Francis. <laughs> yeah. All right, time for the the Mimi fight again. This time we have Thuggy though. Don't have any bathroom stalls though, so I wonder how this is gonna work out. So really cool is that uh, it just kind of works out that we can just do the fast mini fight. Uh, if we just time out Fuzzy Press and hold down the two button, it just works out. Okay. So, uh, yep, there we go. That was pretty quick. Didn't have to see the cycle. Still definitely not like RTA. Like that setup is still, you have to kind of time it, but it just, it still works out very nicely. 
micro task. Yeah, not not at 420 yet. But I have a feeling we're gonna get there soon. Yeah, say goodbye to Peach. You got to see them for like uh, two whole levels, really. They're kind of useful when uh, we, we went through it, but it's time, uh, time to see her go. Bye, Peach. Bye, Peach. Yeah. So we'll be at 418 after this. Then we have a 8-3, and 8-3 is definitely one of my favorites. But it's nice to see like a really cool chapter at the end of the run. A lot of routing has been put into 8-3. Um, and a lot of cool strats have been found, so we'll just sit back and watch it. If you remember, uh, for the uh, Dementio chase, we're going to need Fleet out, so we're not going to have Thudley. We'll still try to make the most of it. So yeah. Yeah, when I uh, originally tasked the uh, segment... Oh, I paused there. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Um, when I tasked the uh, Mimi fight, like, three years ago, I didn't attempt the uh, cycle. That's good. Yeah, but it, it works out, which is really cool. So we're actually going to grab a second block block. We still have the one from 4-4. Uh, now we have two. And there's only There's not much left on the run, so... To think that we still have many items to use is pretty cool. That's the uh, Longa Dial. Not going for the Ice Storm. Um, guess we don't need it. Oh, let's go, we're at 420. It was to unlock the door. Alright, so in this room, um, we would normally need to use Luigi here to hit those blocks. Even bouncing off the uh, magic blocks, we won't be able to reach the blocks. But we're going to use our first block block in this room uh, because the block block reflects those magic blasts back to the magic blocks, which pushes them up into the air and then will allow us to uh, reach the blocks. Uh, we are on a time limit here. The block block will break if we uh, take too long. So we gotta make the most out of it here. That looks so cool. Yeah, wait until you see the last room. <laughs> Doing a little bit of a uh, scuffed RNG manipulation to have these guys in the right place. Because we really don't have time to spare. Last room, we hit these in order. And, uh, there's the last one. Okay, barely in time. Oh wow. Yeah, we'll it. That, perfect. Um, that looked really close, but honestly, uh, I think the last time I did it, I did it a little bit faster, so it was less close. But no, we'll, we'll pretend that it's like perfect or something to make it seem more cool. Overall, that saves 2x. Yeah, so that just saves. Yeah, so instead of switching twice, we just use one item to save. And we still have this other block block, so who knows what we're going to do with that. And, uh, still have two life streaks, so definitely a lot of uh, shenanigans left. Wait, dash Oh, my God. 
That's, uh, that's another key. Alright. Now we're in this room. If you remember, we have to navigate this room in a very specific way. And all these platforms are uh, too high for Luigi. But once again, we're going to use our second block block here. Very similar reason, but now this time we have the Skello bits. So we're going to push them against the wall here. Very similar, we'll be able to make these jumps here. Do it one more time here to get up. You just have to climb up one more platform. That's where this guy's gonna drop uh, his little dude. And one final jump up there. Uh, that one only saves one two press. Uh, the last one saved two. That, that one saved one. And we had a little bit more time to spare for that one. It wasn't as close. Uh, this room sucks, but that's unrelated to the challenge. This, whatever reason, I had a lot of trouble uh, with this room for desyncs. Whatever reason, uh, when I ran this at like a high resolution, it just desynced in this room and only this room. So uh, it works on a uh, native resolution, and I'm pretty sure it just has something to do with my graphics card. But I had to work it's around there's it. There's a couple lag frames in there, so I'm gonna cost it. Yeah, what's weirdly though is that it's has something to do with the RNG. Like midway through that room, it just updates the RNG like way more than it should, and it causes the desync. So uh, unexplained. It I, I'm pretty sure it just has something to do with either Dolphin or my graphics card. All right, but we're past it. Now we're on to uh, Dementia. We're gonna switch over to Fleet and switch over to Luigi. So this is where the fun of routing begins. We're trying to minimize our switches, because obviously we could just, you know, pick out Luigi, pick Dudley, and just go through everything, but we do need to switch over to Mario a few times, and we need Fleet for basically every single segment here, so... The question is, how are we going to do all of this without switching characters as few times as possible? This first area is pretty cool. Uh, I mentioned before that there is a random ceiling. There's actually another random ceiling here, and it's actually useful to us, which will allow us to float across this gap. Huh. Normally we'd need to... Mario Switch, which is amazing. Yeah, it saves a Mario Switch. Um, shout out to um, Zach Link, who found that, like, they uh, found a slightly better route than what I could figure out. That saved two two presses. And we'll see that more. It just uh, erased the second character spot. Um... So yeah, this, this entire like chase sequence is very tricky to route, a lot to consider. I think we've saved like at least 10 throughout the race, not even in the rest of A3. Just because it was, I don't want to say badly done, but there was just so many switches. Yeah, there is so many switches. Some of them were kind of just like oversight, some of them you know, required that, um, oh, we're using a live stream here, because we're not going to switch to Slim. And we're not going to switch to Mario to do what we did last time. Um, but yeah, like, that that ceiling up there with Luigi, like, I didn't know about that until recently. Or, well, quote recently, it's like, two years ago. Um, I, yeah. Quick little thing, I just noticed that the code is on the door after you enter it. I never knew yeah. that. Yeah. Obviously, it's not there when you... Uh, before you input the codes, it's not <laughs> free, but yeah, that's a pretty cool detail. Alright, so now we're in this room. We still have one more live stream at our disposal. We need to cross this gap. So we're gonna use this blooper. And here's the other very useful thing about Fleet here. So it allows us to stall in air, but the blooper could still push us. So, uh, yeah. That allows us to cross that without jumping. Very, I think very neat choice of strat of the whole run. Like, I think so much has to go exactly right to get that. I'm pretty sure that's what Zach Link found that saved the two presses was that paper trick, which was really cool. Because normally we would need to switch to Mario to go into the, uh, the little secret area like we did. That all the way back in 3 2. And, uh, you know, we're down to 1 HP, but thankfully uh, we routed out this level up so that we don't have to hear the uh, beeping all the time. <laughs> That was, like, very well-timed.
So yeah, we do need to switch to Mario here. But we need to switch to Mario anyways in 5-2, so... Just another thing you need to remember for uh, the whole entire chase sequence. So now that we did that, we could switch back to Luigi because we're going to be going back to 7-2. Uh, we, we all know how that level looks like. Uh, thankfully, we don't have to do this with Bowser. So we're going to be a little bit faster than last time. Coming up on the end here, actually. Um, a little over 20 minutes left. Most of that's cutscene, so we're, we're wrapping up quite nicely here. There's a few more uh, little tricks left. Is anyone else unreasonably scared about missing the fleep thing in this room? I feel like I would just miss it and walk past it forever. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Although, like, I remember it being a lot harder to find than, I guess, now. Now I see it every time, but I remember as a kid, I think I walked past it several times. <laughs> it's also kind of just nerve-wracking. It's like, did I already miss it, or did I just haven't encountered it yet? There it is. Yeah, you, you can't actually run up that rubble in that room. You do need to do a, at least a small Luigi jump. Very weird. Yeah, one last time going through this section. We used to get the, uh, the mushroom here to give us more HP, but because we have that level up, we don't need that anymore. And you know, it, like... Of course, it can't just be as simple as solving the maze. We do still need to talk to Dementio. You know, he'll ask us two more questions, so that's another two, two presses. Um, really tempted to just say yes to, I guess, ending the world or whatever he's asking us, but we gotta move forward. We're at 440. So what's really weird is that for this fight, unlike the last two, we don't have any pixels, but you know, because we're Luigi, we're fine with dealing damage without uh, like other anything. So uh, we'll just quickly make work of Dementia here. We're far enough away from the ceiling, so we just do this in one go. Oh, awesome. That was really quick. I see yeah. these traps. Yeah, if you're, if you're too close to the ceiling, uh, you kind of just get like knocked out if you're too low level like we are. So we just opted to be a little bit further away, take a little bit longer, but do the it in game one has so. a stupid fail save where you can pound an enemy while against the roof if you do it more than 10 times and the game considers you stuck and it's like, okay, we're gonna drop you now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, say goodbye to Luigi. Honestly, like, kind of a big L. Um, yeah. If you liked my joke. Before. <laughs> um... Yeah, so one final switch to Thudby here before ending the chapter. We got 442. I only have one level left. I wonder if we're going to be a uh, sub 450. Oh, sorry, 443. Right about the save prompt. No, no. So thankfully, um, 8-4 is a lot more tame than 8-3. Um, you know, the uh, last level kind of assumed you'll use Luigi a few times, so this is just very tame. Another few enemies, uh, rooms of enemies, and like a very long, kind of annoying elevator room. But um, we're almost at the end. We're actually using Tippy here, so I think you can see that often. There's Magic Blood spawn in a really bad place. 
Those magic, magic, dude, Maggie Floss, Magic Floss, I don't know how you say it. Really annoying, they always hit you. Yeah, all these, uh, these elevators kind of conveniently put you in, like, ugly jump range, so. It's just a matter of waiting. I tried to be, a, like, a little bit cool, but ultimately it was, like, you can't really save that much time. So we kind of have to wait. Another elevator room here. This one really sucks because you just, like, when you enter the room, you just all automatically miss the cycle. So, are you gonna survive here? No, we're good. We're good. We've used basically every pixel like at least once, so it's time to use Dottie for the first and really final time. Uh, technically, we didn't even really need to use Carry, so we could have gone through this entire thing without Carry, but saved a little bit of time in uh, pre Chapter 4. We do have to switch back to Thudley because we will be seeing a staircase right before the Black Fight. Do need to at least switch back to Bubbly. And just once again, when you spawn, you just kind of miss the cycle. However, yeah. we're kind of goaded with the uh, Bubbly cancels. I think now we'll bring it up like near the end of 8 4. We did put two asterisks earlier in the run that are going to change the two press total, I believe. So. Yeah, so if you remember a long, long time ago, I told you to make a mental note. And uh, we'll just just keep on to it a little bit longer. Just, just a little bit longer. But for now, we'll just uh, go through these like kind of boring rooms, honestly. Like, There's not even like any jumps to be had. It's just going past enemies. And if, if you don't remember the asterisk, don't worry. You, you don't really need it. We'll show it. <laughs> I feel like that's what I said. I'm sure I'll remember that too, but I still don't remember it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll remind you, it's okay. Yeah, like I said, these rooms just don't really have much going on. You do these without two lux in just casually. I got kind of poked through the wall there. A little bit of time loss. Just one more maze room. Coming up to the end, uh, it's been a. It's been a wild ride. I have two more boss fights coming up, and like, like I forgot how many minutes of cutscenes, but surely it's uh, around 13, 14 minutes of cutscenes. Really. We used up all of our items. We don't have a weird like, uh, like a mystery box at the end. <laughs> Seems like we're coming to the end of the puzzle. And uh, here's the staircase I was talking about. Just gotta, gotta have one more staircase, because this game really loves staircases. Just using Thudley here. Alright. Here we go. The final door.
Here we go. So yeah, if you if you're not aware of how these fights work, there's like a first phase where uh, Black is invincible. We just need to hit him uh, three times, and then one more time, we just advance to the next part. And just a cutscene. Uh, very conveniently, these platforms are each 75 units above the ground. If you remember, Dudley allows us to go up 74, but this is the, like the one case where we get high enough before the ground pound animation starts, so we're actually able to clear it. So that's like the one time we go 76 instead of 74. We actually uh, hit him a few more times here. I don't know why, honestly, it took so long, but... <laughs> Figured, you know, whatever. The magic orb you shot has to disappear before the cutscene can continue. Oh, that's what it is? That's really yeah. funny. <laughs> I know there's like, you could soft lock there somehow. Probably similar where you just not, like, you don't even have luck on screen. I think that's happened to Zach in his, one of his record runs a few years ago. Oh, look, it's Bowser, so he didn't die. That's, that's good. Oh, we have Peach and Luigi as well. I kind of just show up. <laughs> Where's the sacrifice? Where's the uh, the feelings? <sighs> now these uh, this black fight's actually gonna take a little bit longer. We don't have much attack, so we're not switching to Bowser or anything. Uh, I tried to get some good patterns, but uh, it wasn't as good as it could have been. So we'll just take what we can get. I think coming up we're going to see uh, one of the slides. We get at least a few hits. Works a lot better with Bowser. At least this not the robot. We're actually taking the slow effect. Yeah, so ideally, you uh, you can melt black with Bowser and kill him really fast and then recycles. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. I try that like whenever I can get favorable and use pause. I don't want to spend too long on the fight. Ultimately, it's just kind of kind of repetitive. I forgot how much HP Black has. I think it's like uh, 150. 150. Wow. At least uh, at least Lovely does double damage. So we're not stuck doing four at a time. There we go. Wasn't too bad. We uh, just have one more fight left. Go Super Dementia. And that's going to go by a lot faster. Cutscene. Let's go. Plot twist? Nah, I just think Dementio hates secretaries. <laughs> I don't know what Luigi's up to, dude, but... Probably not good. Where are the weeds in this game? Yeah, just like uh, Black before, we need to 
get uh, to be meant to go three times before we into the next fight. Or uh, next, I guess, cutscene. Do the poor one button throughout this entire task. It's been working hard going through all this dialogue. Shout out to the one button. <laughs> Can we get a one button press count? Um, I think I'll pass, honestly. I probably could actually figure it out, um, like maybe using a script, but I think we'll I think we'll just leave it up for interpretation. Someone else throw out out for six years. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit left. Just one final fight. At least this time we don't have to worry about. Uh, like RNG and patterns, you just kind of go at them. Gotta yeah. go for the head though, there's more damage. Care about our HP, so we just take a bunch of hits. And that's it. GG. GG. Just have a few more uh, dialogue to go through. That one blast persisted through the cutscene, it's pretty funny. I think so, everyone is still waiting to know what the asterisk is. Yeah, so what's that all about? Well, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. We're gonna wait through the cut, uh, the credits, because the credits are very important. But, uh, there is... I So if you guessed 448, technically you were right. But I think I have lied to you, though, because that's actually not the lowest two-press uh, two count for the game. Uh, so during the task's creation, Moonrise actually found Two more two presses, and I think at the point I was already at like chapter five. So instead of being cool and redoing everything, uh, I decided to instead uh, just go through and then add them to the end for improvements. <laughs> so um, we'll we'll see we'll actually see the uh, the improvements at the end, but for now we'll just watch through the credits. So the true count is a uh, four forty six. But uh, at the time, so actually, at the time of creation, the whole big reveal was that it was going to be 450 flat. Because for the longest time, it was 451. And then I found the uh, the two press save in 1 4 with the shell shop. So the big reveal was like, oh, it's 450. And then uh, I went ahead, uh, or Moonrise then found two more two presses that brought up 448. And then I just found two more while making the test. So kind of just like a, a weird not round number 446 but hey it's it's sub 450 which is pretty cool obviously we're not gonna need to push two for the last bit here the, the epilogue but you don't get it you have to save your file at the end <laughs> do we have to <laughs> no timing all <laughs> task timing always ends before the credits yeah I, 
Let's let's just uh let's just erase everything that's happened here. I mean we haven't saved since the very beginning, so <laughs> we'll be at this the uh, the intro. But yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Wow. How many times have we done that today between all of us? <laughs> Saying the same things. Really? <laughs> but yeah, that was a great cast to showcase. I certainly enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of great moments. Fortunately, a lot of times we just kind of have to sit around. But I think for a uh, you know for someone who's not watching the entire six hours on Twitch, someone who's able to like, kind of skip around, that would be a really good watch. <laughs> um, but you know, it's all in the name of decreasing that two press count. And hey, I mean, like if if we found four two press saves between like the creation of the test till now, there's probably a whole lot more we could save and. It's definitely not the end of the uh, two button challenge. I, I'm sure there's more that we've missed, but for now, this is a pretty good number, I would say. It's also another reason why I didn't really want to restart everything, because I'm sure if I restarted when I found those two presses, I'm sure we would have found something <laughs> later. Um, and this always opens the opportunity to, you know, maybe make another version two in the future if we save enough. True, very true. Um, I guess I'll just talk. To, I was going to talk a little bit about this in the credits, but I guess I could explain now. Um, so yeah, there's always the uh, optimization even further, trying to save more two presses. Um, there is the another idea that I had that is kind of just like a true jump list where. It's kind of like the two button challenge, but we're allowed to use items. Um, you know, anything that is a menuing doesn't count. But in a trade off, the grounded buddies would be banned and Luigi's super jump would be banned. It would be a very different challenge, but I haven't really even begun to route that. I just theorized that to get past the first area, you would need to like grind out like a million coins to get live shrooms and shell shocks to skip like the first few jumps. Eight, so, three, the, the like second room where you need to use Luigi to get up the thing. Oh, no yeah. Fudleys, no Luigi. How you get up there? Huh? <laughs> what wonder. But uh, there's always I, I mentioned this a few times about the task, but there's also the uh, the minimum flips challenge, which is also like really cool. That's probably what I would prioritize. That's uh so mainly this two button challenge um, was spearheaded by me, but. The A button challenge has been like a huge community effort. A lot of people have been had uh, routes and stuff, so that would be cool to like maybe have a community task. Because I know some people who work on it uh, know how to task stuff. We'll see. That's that's in the future. Huge shout out to A button, Ian, Maggie, and Marty, the megabytes. Yeah, Ian, <laughs> Maggie, Craggy, uh, Marty, and uh, Steven. I, I ah, yes. Yeah. Megabytes. Stan. Or, uh, sorry, that's Stanley. Stanley, that's Stephen. My bad. Oh, I'm so rude. All right, just coming up here to the end. A few more grab logs. And uh, and Joshua, the job is that is true. And maybe we meet in another time and place. And timing ends there because tasks. That was the last input. A little bit separate time. That's why we started at the uh, power on. But yeah, that's uh, that is the. Minimum two presses tasks uh, has been in production since, well, routing has been there since 2018. The actual test started in August of last year. Uh, for those who said 446, uh, GG. I definitely didn't cheat by looking at the Google sheet, but <laughs> GG either ways. <laughs> um, I mean, if you did guess 446, technically you're wrong. Um, but yeah, stick around. Um, we are going to show You're off. wrong either way. That's what we're trying to tell you. <laughs> There's no winners here. You get nothing. But yeah, uh, stick around for the end. We'll show off those last two two presses. Uh, fortunately, I just didn't include at the... Because uh, they were really early on. <laughs> I would have had to restart from 1-2. So that's that's how far back we were talking. Let's just erase all the progress. <laughs> Uh, I want to give it just a few shout outs. So first of all, I, I feel bad because I didn't mention that at the start, but uh, again, huge shout out to Xander um, for helping me set up the input display. Uh, it turned out very nice. Um, he's actually working on a more public um, tool so that anybody could use it um, for any game, any uh, Dolphin game. 
which is really cool. Um, shout out to like basically everyone who's helped out throughout the years on the Two Man Challenge. So even though I spearheaded, there's a lot of people that worked on stuff. I mentioned Zachman saved a few two presses. Uh, Roblox saved a few. Uh, Gurmi found that setup in the two one. Moonrise obviously found those two that we're going to show at the end. Um, I'm sure plenty of others that have theorized, came up with routes and stuff at the end. So big shouts to everyone there. And of course, everyone who's like found glitches that kind of inadvertently saved two presses. <laughs> big FLC moment. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, 446. Uh, unfortunately, I was gonna like do this whole like um, custom credits thing. I just ran out of time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was gonna show off the progression. I guess I'll explain now. I'll show off the progress. Well, not show off. I'll talk about the progression. So I mentioned it started at 625 back in 2018, and uh, I have a whole bunch of graphs on the Google Sheets. I'll probably link it in the uh, non-commentary version. But uh, back in uh, 2020, well, 2019, it dropped to 575. 2020 dropped to like 550. Uh, around mid-2020, dropped to 525. Um, around 2021, there was like a huge bunch of two presses. So we dropped all the way from like 500 to like 475. And then these past two years, we've uh, narrowed it down to 446. And who knows what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and just big thanks to the uh, commentators today. If you guys want to say like any final messages? It's been amazing thanks, watching Jack. you have this journey, and I've been with it for quite a few years now, and it's really cool to see it finally like capped off with this task. But yeah. work's still ongoing, obviously, and. Cool to <laughs> see that you've stuck with it for six years because there's yeah, a certain it's sense been of a dedication. Big off and on, but yeah. I was oh, gonna say so thank there's you more. For, I was gonna say thank you to JCR for oh, here's streaming. The, here's the two improvements. Streaming. Uh, so this is actually um, very similar to what we did in um, four dash. Oh, sorry, three dash four. We could actually skip hitting the block and then using another jump to climb the ladder if we uh, take damage. It's very similar to what we did three dash four, and here. We have to go actually go back to 2-2, two because we need one extra damage, or one extra HP. And turns out, uh, I actually just discovered this, we could actually just enter this door from here, so we don't need to do another HP. <laughs> so, cool. um, so that allows us to do the same thing again here. Uh, we have to just lower our HP, because we need to have a... Uh, we need enough HP to not die. We'll just do it one more time here, so that just saves another one. So yeah, true total, 446. Uh, unfortunately, just kind of included in the task. Um, and then I, I kind of just goofed off here. Apparently, there's a little extra little thing here. Um, I kind of can just like not take damage here for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. All right, bye Mario. That's what you get for keeping us at like zero HP for like forever. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank, uh, thanks for watching. Again, big shout outs to everyone who worked on it. Big shout out to JCR to help me set this up and everything. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that was really good. Hanging out. Thanks Zimbo for the hard work with the Taz. Thanks everyone for commentating with me. And thanks everyone in chat for watching. Yeah, thanks for sticking around for like 10 bathroom breaks in six hours. It was quite the journey. <laughs> well, we will see you guys next time. Next week, actually, we will be doing a community wa or not community. Well, how would you ex how would I explain it? It is a relay race between two teams of category extensions that we have for SPM, and we also have all pixels uh, race for next week as well. So stick around for that. It will be Without lots of fun. Trying. JCR will be back. I know we all dearly miss him. Um. Yeah. Well, I do actually do want to mention one thing. Uh, Xander just messaged me, and they said that uh, he just created a tool that allows to check the total amount of presses. So if we really want to know how many one presses there are, we have a tool for it now. So really cool. <laughs>